The lowest position for two years, but with a midweek win and Conti Cup confidence, can the Gunners push for Europe? Sickness in the camp, and despite being back to back in the goals, Sina Black Stenius on the bench, one of two changes. While it's a change of fortunes on the road, Reading need the worst away record in the league. They also haven't beaten Arsenal in 13. With her team still in a relegation scrap, Kelly Chambers has named the same 11 that beat West Ham. Chelsea topped the table after beating Manchester United earlier on. Manchester City won two. That all means Arsenal six points off the Champions League places. But that vital win for Reading last weekend, that was a huge boost. And they've got a three-point gap over Leicester at the bottom. It is a trip to Arsenal then for the final game of the weekend as the Gunners host Reading. Kick-off 6.45. Evening all, Kelly Smith and Karen Carney in from the cold of Wednesday <laughs> night and wrapped up warm, as should be Jonas Eidvel. The Arsenal boss gave his coat to a fan after that Conti Cup final win as he got one back. He's with Lindsay. One of those players that I believe has suffered with some illness this week and missed a couple of training sessions is Stina Blackstenius. And she had such a fantastic record against Reading, but also it hit some goal scoring form. So are you gutted about that, her having to miss out? Yeah, of course, but <coughs> that's how it is sometimes. And she's been doing an incredible job just being available from the bench uh, here today. So we're happy to, to have that as an option. If you win today, you will have three successive wins for the first time in 2023. Is that something that surprises you that you've not done that yet this year? We haven't played that many games either uh, so far. So uh, we always try to win every football game that we uh, that we play. We have played some really tough opponents as well. We have had some tough schedules. So uh, we're going to do our very best here today and hopefully we can win. Another reshuffle forced upon Jonas side of How big a loss to have Stina Black Stenius on the bench? Yeah, I'm disappointed she's not started really, but we understand why. Um, she's got seven goals in the last ten appearances. So you're just seeing the confidence come back into her now. You fit into the team. It's starting to kind of be more fluid with her in the sides. But what I would say is Arsenal have got a big squad and a good squad. And even in the midfield, you've got Leah Volte, you've got Kim Little and Leah Williamson in today. So they should cope given the circumstances. Kelly, Karen mentions Captain Kim yeah. Little, particularly in that Conti Cup final, almost untouchable. Yeah, I was there, Caroline. She was absolutely phenomenal. And you can just see, you know, from the stats, possession one, first, interceptions, um, not so happy about with third, um, but blocks. She, she was just phenomenal in that Conti Cup final. She was everywhere, covered every blade of grass. And, you know, the, the stats don't lie. She's up there, first, second, first, third, first. You know, she's just been phenomenal. And what I love about Kim Little, you know, we all like to talk about Kim Little. She's an amazing player, very fortunate to play with her. Is her defensive responsibilities? I'm just going to highlight her here, at the t just at the top of the box. She's come out to put pressure on Hagisawa. Watch her footwork. She's like a little crab moving from side to side, but she senses the danger. Watch here, look, side steps and that explosive pace. And she sniffs it out. Good, strong in the tackle there. And what's so good about this clip is... She was in this position here, now she sets the play up from uh, back to front and Arsenal now are now able to, to counter-attack. Yes, it didn't come off, but Arsenal want to play in those positions. Mm. Here, just going to highlight her, it's her ability to get back and protect the back line. You see her there. It's the desire, the hunger to protect uh, Williamson and Souza. You just see here when Hemp cuts inside, she sniffs it out, she reads it and she's just there when, it cuts, when she cuts inside. Yes, Arsenal clear the ball, but that was all down to her, you know, them breaking away. In this one here at the top of the box, again, she just has this innate ability, I'm just going to highlight it here, to, to figure out where the ball's going to go. And you can't teach this. This is just experience um, and understanding of the game. And there it goes. She's in the right place at the right time, but she can't play a forward pass right now. But what does she do? She says, OK, I'm going to go back, recycle the ball and we'll start attack from the back with Leah Williamson. And that's what she gives you, that defensive side, that protection here in the middle of the park. She knows she's not going to win this first ball, but it's that forward pass there. Can I play forward at every, every opportunity? Here, she just, just highlight her here. You know, she's just waiting for the ball. Just that little anchor roll. Here she is, little anchor roll, waiting for the ball. And then can she play forward? Yes, she can, but she doesn't do it easy. You know, she makes it, she makes it look easy. And that's just this, this one here in the middle of the park. She slips here, but look at that, how quick she is, those quick little um, footwork, and then obviously plays the final ball. But it's just her 
defensive work is so good, but the ability that she has to dribble, to create things for Arsenal is crucial. And when she plays, Arsenal have only conceded four goals. So that's how important she is in this Arsenal side. When she plays, they don't really concede that many. She's crucial for them, especially with Beth and Viv out. I think she's up to her game now. So she'll be important tonight. And she's also, we you know, hung up her international boots. You're seeing the benefit of that with her? Yeah, look, I mean, to be fair, she's 32, but she seems to be getting better and better. But the thing when you don't play international football, you use that week wisely, you rest, you can recover, you have the energy and you can play well for your club then. And I think it's just about protecting herself. And look, she's one of the most intelligent players I think we've ever played with. And Kelly's just showed fantastically those clips there. Um, so I'm not surprised she's been really smart off the pitch as well. Big player then for Arsenal today. Big player in that Conti Cup final win, of course, over Chelsea. Jonas Eidvold said he wasn't going to keep an eye on this result today, but a big <laughs> win for Chelsea, Karen. Yeah, it was. I mean, this is an unbelievable ball from Lauren James oh. in between the two centre-backs. And what a touch and a brilliant finish from Sam Kerr. I must say, I thought Manchester United were the better side, but you're more vulnerable when you have the ball yourself. And in those little moments when you see, you know, Kerr running behind the spaces and the counter-attacking football Chelsea can play, that was a difference today. You went, didn't you? Oh, when she takes down the ball, how beautiful it was. But, but that Lauren James pass. Filthy. She should be able <laughs> to do that, seriously. The vision that she has as soon as she received that ball, she was looking for Kerr, who loves to play on the centre-half shoulders. And what's so impressive with Sam Kerr's finish is a striker probably would have just powered that in, but it was just the delicacy just to chip it over Mary Earps. It was, that was just a cheeky finish, but that was probably one of the goals of the season for me. Just because it was in such a big, crucial game, top of the table clash, absolutely filthy by Lauren James. Filth. Filth. Love it. <laughs> uh, a win then for Chelsea today over Manchester United. Arguably one of the biggest games of the season, and they pick up the three points. Elsewhere, huge result for Manchester City. Bunny Shaw got two in that one and a late one to beat Brighton. Crucial point for Leicester at the bottom of the table, that nil-nil with Everton. Liverpool came from behind to beat Spurs and Villa won 2-1 at West Ham. Proper congested then at the bottom of the table, but after beating West Ham, can Reading go back to back for the first time in a year? It's hit by Rowe. Oh, a fantastic strike from Rachel Rowe. What a beauty. Rowe with the shot. It makes it two. Yeah, Rachel Rowe's brilliant goals make her Reading's top scorer. Manager Kelly Chambers will be hoping for more of the same tonight. Let's hear from her with Lindsay. You've not won an away match all season and you're 12 points worse off than the same stage last season as well. Is it all about survival for you this year? Yeah, definitely it is. Like for a club like us, when you're trying to compete with the other clubs that are in this league, it's, it's tough and look, we, we don't hide from that. Um, and, and the players know, look, we sat down just before the last international break and gone, look, we can either just lay down and, and let it be or we can get up and fight. And to be fair, every single one of them came back after that international break ready to go. And the, I, I think you can see that in our last couple of performances and, and the results. And so we just need to take that into today. And how do you see that battle at the bottom shaping up? Yeah, it, look, it's competitive. It's the same as the other end of the table. Like, you don't want to be in this, this position, but we are. Um, but I feel like I've got the players here and the staff here that we can really fight to get out of this position. But obviously, last weekend was a huge three points on the board for us. So it's taken a little bit of pressure off, not much. But in terms of teams now that have got to try and catch us first, it's not us playing the catching game. So, yeah, we just need to take every game as it comes week by week and just really, really concentrate on us. That's one side of it, Karen, being the chase. But have you seen enough fight in this Reading side that they'll be OK? I mean, I really enjoyed their performance last week against West Ham. I think they've got good counter-attacking players, Charlie Wellings, Harris on the right-hand side, and obviously Rowe can finish from long distance, and I'd be saying to her, shoot more often, especially with the goalkeepers in this league. Um, but, yeah, and I think Jade Moore brings experience, and Maya Kitt, as well, who came in in the January window, have added a lot of um, experience to the side. So... But I think what Kelly said there, it's about mentality. All the teams down there are fighting for their lives and there's probably a much of a much muchness between them. So the difference for me is the mentality and how they've got to fight to get out of it. But you just see Jade Moore there. I think she'll be massive for them. She's been in that situation before, as has the manager. All right, key is actually the games that Reading have still got coming up. They've got to play Brighton, Leicester and Spurs. So as Kelly Chambers was saying, very much in their own hands. It's a night for a couple of screens here on Sky Sports. 
Scheffler currently has a, a one-shot lead in the Players' Championship, so you can watch that on Sky Sports Golf. Our focus, though, Arsenal against Reading. We're there, as are our commentary team tonight. Emma Byrne is alongside Jackie Oakley. Thank you very much, Caroline, and good evening, everyone. Welcome to Meadow Park, where Arsenal find themselves in the unusual position of being outside the top three Champions League places, looking up six points behind the Manchester clubs and nine behind old foes Chelsea, who won earlier on today. But crucially, with two games in hand on all of them, and they're looking to scale the first three rungs on that stepladder here against previously friendly opponents, Reading, who've never taken away a point from Meadow Park in their six attempts. And Jonas Edebal makes two changes to the side that beat Liverpool here on Wednesday night. Manuela Tinsberger has started every league game for Arsenal this season. Laura Wienreuter stays at right back with Noam Ritz coming in at left back. The regular Steph Catley still out with a foot injury. Lotta Vuban Moy comes in to partner Hafaeli. Leah Williamson moves into midfield alongside Leah Velti. Captain Kim Little was outstanding against Chelsea in the League Cup final last Sunday. Katie McCabe moves further forward and is one yellow card away from missing the Tottenham game through suspension. Frieda Mornham is expected to play as a striker. Stina Blackstenius has been unwell this week and drops to the bench. Dutch player Victoria Palova is on the bench as well. Well, Kelly Chambers names an unchanged 11 from the side that beat West Ham last weekend. Grace Maloney starts in goal for the third game in a row with Jackie Burns on the bench. Cameroon international Esther Mai Kitt starts her second WSL match after joining from Swedish side Kristen Sands. Former England midfielder Jade Moore makes her 50th WSL appearance for Reading, this being her second spell at the club. Amalia Eichland has played every minute in the league this season. Emma Harries is a lifelong Arsenal supporter and starts her seventh league game in a row after injury. Rachel Rowe makes a 150th appearance for Reading, having scored that crucial late winner against West Ham last Sunday after Charlie Weddings had opened the scoring. On the Reading bench, Sandy Trollsgaard used to play under the Arsenal boss Adeval at Rosengard. Lily Woodham's available after illness. And watching along with us this evening, former Arsenal goalkeeper Emma Byrne. Who are your ones to pick out tonight? Yeah, Jackie, looking forward to this one, you know, and I definitely want to talk about this player here, Catelyn Ford. She's been excellent for Arsenal. She was excellent against Chelsea. And, you know, she does. she's not a massive goal scorer, but her assist and her contribution to the team is huge. She's really settling in here well, and she's my player for tonight with Arsenal. And then for the team, visiting team, we've got Rachel Rowe here. I think she's excellent for Reading. She's so instrumental for them. She gets forward, she likes to get her foot in, she loves to score goals from outside the area, and she's a real key player for them if they're going to get Anthony out of this game. Well, there are nine games left for Arsenal to try to ideally win the league from their perspective for the first time since 2019. And little margin for error. Reading, eight games left to secure safety in an ever more competitive battle at the bottom. And good atmosphere inside Meadow Park tonight, as we always expect. For the most decorated side in the history of English women's football. As the players take a knee again in protest at all forms of discrimination in football. Our referee tonight is Amy Fern, and we're underway. It is Arsenal versus Reading. The Champions League quarter-finalists versus the FA Cup quarter-finalists. And there's all to play for in the league as well. What will the key elements of tonight be, Emma? Well, I think it's going to be try and keep Arsenal out, you know, as much as possible. Arsenal are prolific goal scorers and then of course with that win against Chelsea in the, the Continental League Cup they're going to be coming into this game with loads of confidence. The problem for Arsenal is they had found that momentum and unfortunately due to illness or injury they can't play the same team which is exactly what Arsenal needed. They needed that, that consistency with the same team. So with Reading when they win the ball back can they keep it? Can they look after the ball? 
There's Katie McCabe for Arsenal in a more advanced role tonight instead of at left back. Very versatile left sided player. The ball forwards from Velti straight to Mike Kith, the new signing from Christian Stats, and that'll be a foul and a free kick to Arsenal. Yeah, and that's the exact situation I was talking about, Jackie, when they get the ball back, particularly playing out from the back. You can see that Arsenal are pressing high. They're going to be on them as soon as they get the ball. They're going to have to find that balance of clearing their lines and, and trying to keep the ball. You can't kick the ball away there in this position. The rain falling heavily in Hertfordshire. There's McCabe and Warnham standing over it. It's the Norwegian to take it into the danger area and Vuban Moy hopeful of getting a touch at the far post but it eluded her. <laughs> Arsenal a real threat from set pieces and the player designated as a striker tonight taking it. We do have centre-halves who can score in the shape of Hafaeli and Vuban Moy in tonight with Leah Williamson, England captain Moving into a midfield role alongside Leo Velti. Here is the Brazilian Paelli, but a knock to the face. Yeah, I don't think there was any malice in that. You can just see Emma Harris coming across. It's good pressing from her. It's what we want to see. We want to see Redding press the ball higher up the pitch, try and win that back, especially when you've got Rowe playing a little bit higher up the pitch. She's going to be the one to initiate that press as she's doing right now. It's strange, Emma, when we look at the table and see Arsenal below the dotted line. Only the top three getting into Europe. Just, it just doesn't seem right. It just doesn't look right, does it? I mean, if they get the three points here today, they will cross that line, but it's so tied up there. I can't remember a tighter league WSL league in a very, very long time. Yes, the first and the second have been tied over the years, but not the first, second, third and fourth. That makes it interesting. Here come Arsenal driving forwards once again. There's an early chance for them. And they scream for a, a free kick and a penalty, in fact. And it has been awarded by Amy Fern. That burst of pace forwards. Reading protesting. Well, she does it again, doesn't she? Katie McCabe wins a penalty, and it's all about getting into the box, driving into the box. She's really good with the ball at her feet. It was lovely play initially as Marnham drops and Katie McCabe goes in ahead of her. I need to see that again. I mean, it's difficult, isn't it, to see with all the legs in there. It didn't initially look like a penalty to me. Kim Little to take it. Oh, and he just evades the despairing hand of Grace Maloney and Kim Little ports Arsenal a goal to the good. Having had a penalty saved in the reverse fixture in October, 1-0 to the Arsenal. I was just going to say she doesn't miss, but she does, as she just said, Burns saved the last penalty she had against Reading. And Grace Maloney gets her hand to it. She'd be disappointed because if you get there as a goalkeeper, that's the hard bit, and just keeping a strong hand and pushing around the post, but she couldn't do that. But it's all about that run from Katie McCabe in there. It's what she does best, the ball at her feet running into those areas, and that's why we want to see her playing higher up the pitch. Well, penalty awarded. No doubt that red and white viewers watching will be saying, well, where was the contact there? Rather, the blue and white will be wondering. <laughs> and there was a challenge initially outside, and then she went down inside. Oh, that's going to be fun for the guys in the studio to unpick at half time. The only thing that is for certain is the penalty was awarded, and Arsenal are in front. I mean, I wasn't really sure it was a penalty last week either, and I'm just as unsure this week, to be honest. More difficult to see in this case. very quickly with so many bodies in the box and certainly the driving run of Katie McCabe is what led to that penalty and Arsenal piling on the pressure once again in the drizzle here at Meadow Park. And McCabe 
with the free kick into the danger area. It's away by Justine van Havermaet. And Reading having a lot of defensive work to do in the early stages. Yeah, they're putting themselves under pressure, really. Especially that ball coming in from Kate McCabe. In these conditions as well, it's really hard for a goalkeeper. It's very slippy. There's a big gap between Grace Maloney and her, her defensive line. Big space for her to cover. But Van Havermaet did really well to defend that. McCabe in the thick of the action with a flutter on this time, straight into the arms of Maloney. signalling their intent in the early stages here. As I mentioned earlier, Reading have never so much as taken a point from an away game here at Meadow Park. And there's six matches now and they'll be up against it. Yeah, they are. I mean, coming into the game, that the fact that they haven't won an away game this season, the stats are looking pretty poor at the moment. But you know what? This game, if I were... Uh, the manager, Kelly, I'd be saying to them, listen, yes, we want to go out, you want to perform, you want to try and get a, a point or something from the game, but it's not the crucial game for them to get the points from. Certainly not. Reading have key games at home to follow against Brighton, Everton and Aston Villa, and they have good home records against all three. Certainly that 2-1 win. Late winner from Rachel Rowe, giving them a little bit of breathing space with difficult matches coming up here against Arsenal and also against Chelsea in the FA Cup quarterfinals. Williamson, in touch football from Arsenal. Booted clear by Bryson. not just about the title race, which is thrilling, with Chelsea currently top with 37 points. And Manchester United two points behind after that defeat for them at Chelsea earlier. Manchester City also on 35, and then Arsenal just behind them. But down the bottom as well is absolutely fascinating. And Leicester currently bottom, Brighton just a point above them, and Tottenham just a point above them after nine successive league defeats. Absolutely extraordinary. It's incredible. I mean, it's what you want to see as a spectator, that excitement. I mean, we weren't even talking about Tottenham having to, to fight that battle, uh, you know, before Christmas. They looked pretty safe. They looked like they were playing. They signed some really good players. I thought they were going to, you know, be, be mid-table around this time. Definitely not fighting relegation, but they're definitely down there. Reading are actually the ones that look they are in the best position to be quite honest and as I said they really need to focus on getting results from those games the Leicester the Brighton and the Tottenham game as well and Kelly Chambers has a huge amount of experience you think Reading will be winning women you certainly think of Kelly Chambers job she's done there over the years the only team in the top flight who don't have the backing of Premier League money since Birmingham City were relegated I underestimate how much of a difference a healthy budget or otherwise can make oh it's massive and you know sometimes you forget that you know it's a huge thing that they don't have the budget to bring in the players I think they've done an excellent job being in this position Caitlin Ford for Arsenal Looking to make something happen once again is another shot on target, but Mornham unable to get enough power on it. They're just so quick in that transition, aren't they? Reading can't afford to switch off as well. What I will say, when that ball goes into the box from Arsenal, Reading need to get tighter. They cannot allow that space in there, whether it's from crosses, from corners, or from crosses from play. describing her as phenomenal in that League Cup final. 
an excellent player, isn't she? And, you know, I'm really happy to see her getting that recognition because she deserves it. Too much emphasis on the age, and as Karen Carney said earlier, she's probably in the best form of her life. I think it's going to be interesting to see her playing in that number 10 role. It's where she started with Arsenal, it's where she used to play when, when I was playing. She was unbelievable up there and has gradually kind of dropped back a bit. Good for Arsenal. Very positive. Here's McCabe thinking about shooting. So she should as well. I'm gonna say, certainly has the ability. Yeah, why wouldn't she? She actually has loads of space in there. You can see there that hey, Grace Bryson was just drawn into the to, towards the ball, leaving Katie McCabe there with a little bit of space. Of course, she's going to shoot from there. Grace Maloney was in a good position. Chance for Reading to drive forwards. What do they have? Here's Rachel Rowe, such a key attacking force for them. Wins the ball back high up the field on so many occasions for them. Goals are difficult to come by, but goodness, she scored some absolute stonkers. That's a shame. Dinger outside the box. <laughs> I only said stronger, but that's such a ridiculous <laughs> word. I stopped myself just in time. <laughs> she scored from outside the box in the 85th minute. The winner last weekend against West Ham, which really has given them a little bit of breathing space. Now, as I said, she is crucial for them, and she's playing in that number nine role, and, and what she's doing really well is, is dropping into midfield when she needs to, and she does need to, because that three in midfield for Reading are really struggling against the Arsenal midfield, so she has to drop in. But the problem is when she drops in, there's nobody up front, so she does have to run with it, and unfortunately lost the ball on that occasion. Board with the early ball to McCabe. He won that early penalty for Arsenal. Played by Bryson. Katie McCabe, a player you know very well. Your Irish connections. I'm actually looking forward to seeing her at the World Cup this summer. Oh, I'm just absolutely buzzing for it. As the whole of Ireland there, she is our little star player. And I'm also buzzing to see her playing higher up the pitch for Arsenal. Ritz with the early ball in for Warner, but the flag is up. Can it count it anyway? Yeah, she just... Oh, it's so tight. Very, very slightly offside. If you're offside, you're offside. It's actually a really good ball in from Marit. But she didn't know she was offside. She should be hitting the target there. Playing as a central striker tonight with Steenie Blackstenius on the bench in good form. She scored two and two against Reading. Some successive matches looking to try to regain some confidence with the goals drying up somewhat for Arsenal. Missing such key players in Kath Mead and Viviana Miedemark due to back-to-back -back ACLs in the space of a few weeks. So both will struggle for the World Cup, though Beth Mead has publicly said she's using it as a target. And would desperately love to be there, given the incredible impact she had at the European Championship. The two of them there in decent spirits. Their side, a penalty to the good. Yeah, she's, she's saying I would have scored that one. <laughs> no, I think, you know, any, any team that are missing players of that stature, that, that's quality would struggle and you know Arsenal have done really really well Rachel Rose she's got the wrong side of Bob and Moy by Elliot across the challenge it's another player that was absolutely outstanding last week in the cup final Kim Little and Raffaele are my players of the match I thought Raffaele is brilliant and you can really notice when she's out of the team they just don't have that balance in defense when she's not there Defending to do, had a great deal to do so far. You would expect Arsenal to have the lion's share of possession here at Meadow Park, and the lion's share of the chances, but that doesn't count for everything. We've seen a few shots, haven't we, in the WSL over the years? Yeah, we have, and, and you know, we, we've been shocked a few times at Arsenal by Reading. Difficult team to play against. The problem for Reading at the moment is when Arsenal get the ball. 
they're releasing it and releasing the likes of Caden McCabe and Marnham with that long pass. I think they're going to have to find a way to close that ball down and, and not allow that, that pass from, from the defence or from the deep line midfield from Arsenal. Reading having lost their first four games this season, just as they did last season. Last season they went on to win six and draw one of the next seven. Difficult start this season, losing six of the first seven, only beating Leicester with two stoppage time goals from Rachel Rowe. And that win last weekend against West Ham came after four successive league defeats. So those celebrations were true and wild. From a neutral's point of view, it is fascinating to see the bottom of the table, isn't it? Because with only one team going down, and it's very, very hard to get back up, by the way, and uh, we don't want to get cut adrift, but Willie Kirk giving Leicester more than a fighting chance now he's been installed there. Yeah, he's done a brilliant job, hasn't he? It's, it's a shame you don't want to see anybody go down, and normally I don't want to see anyone go down anyway, but if there is a team that's weaker and you know that it's getting absolutely hammered every week, you, you feel like they kind of deserve to be in that lower league, but there there aren't any teams in this league that I feel deserve to go down because I think Leicester have turned a corner. Little finds Moritz, usually a right back, playing left back tonight with Steph Catley out with a foot injury. Williamson, lovely, calm, measured trademark pass from her. McCabe fizzed it into the centre, such a dangerous ball. Maloney with the punch. Rafaeli strikes from distance, and that deflection could have gone anywhere. As it is, it's a corner. But that's the ball that Reading have to close down. That's twice now. Williamson two minutes before that, and then Raffaelli had time and space to get a shot off. She, you can't afford them that time. You can see Harris there. She goes to close down, but it's not good enough. They need to get there quicker and stop that ball just outside the area. Gemma Evans mightily relieved to see her touch deflect the ball wide of that left-hand post and still Arsenal come again with Katie McCabe who won that early penalty away. not very far though back in with interest to Veen Reuter here's Moritz to the pitch here you pick up pretty much everything in the stands can't you <laughs> sometimes that's a good thing it's not a good thing when you're playing though i can tell you that much the other fans behind the goal mccabe belty What love watching Leah Velti play. The fact that you don't know whether she's going to use a left foot or a right seems almost equally as confident on both. Everything looks easy, doesn't she? It's just a natural thing for her to move with the ball at her feet. Makes really good movements just in there. Look, she's just, she just seems to be always free, and that's not by accident. It might be just a couple of steps here, a couple of steps there, but always free and ready to get the ball. Lovely play by Ford. Can it go for goal? Caitlin Ford, who scored here with a head in midweek against Liverpool. Looking to get on the score sheet again. Just opened up for her. Well, she did well to get a little bit of time and space for herself. And she'll be a little bit disappointed there. Just falls to her left foot, but she doesn't hit the target. after the big win on Sunday. Liverpool were hoping that they'd celebrated long and hard. There's a joke about it being a non-alcoholic Prosecco. <laughs> they were fizzing around. I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> and Moritz. 
Williams in the centre and calling for it. Here's Little. Kay battling away to try to avoid a booking tonight so she doesn't miss the match against Tottenham, the North London derby. Well, I spoke to her before the game and I warned her. I told her no more yellow cards. No yellow cards today. And she said she's going to try her very best. She doesn't want to miss any games. Tends to be the only game she does miss, doesn't it? Through suspension. That match against Spurs at Brisbane Road, where Lake Orient play on Saturday, March the 25th. That's their next league game. They don't have a game next weekend, Arsenal. Seems they're out of the FA Cup. They play at Bayern Munich in the Allianz Arena on Tuesday the 21st. They're not thinking about that now, though. They're thinking about defending at home to Reading, making sure they get all three points and remain in the title race. It's away only as far as Kim Little. Lovely awareness and touch from her. And McCabe wants it. McCabe's made the run. Just asking too much of, of McCabe there. You can see what she was trying to do, but Katie had made the run a little bit left, and if Kimmy just dragged it a bit left. But I think she was wary that Emma Mukandi was on her shoulder, just about to, to slide in, I'd say. So just too much on that ball to McCabe. Belty looking to play in Moritz. Stopped in the tracks by my kid, who's out of position now. And Mornum and Little! <laughs> so close to a Kim Little double. That was close, wasn't it? Just waiting to, to see that net rattle. And it's what Kim Kimmy needs. She needs to score from open play. We know she scores the penalties. She's a goal scorer. I just think playing a little bit higher up that pitch, she can get that goal from open play just to even give her more confidence. She's taken the most penalties in WSL history, 21 now, and scored 17 now. Incredible to think she scored 11 hat-tricks for Arsenal. Bubben Moy. One touch play from Arsenal. Here's Little again, looking for the run of Mornum. There's no signs of fatigue from Arsenal tonight, and they could be forgiven for being a little mentally tired. But not so, and here they come again. No, they know. They know every single game is so important. We're watching the results today, watching the teams ahead of them get the points they needed, apart from United, but still sit ahead of them. So they, they're going to need that hunger every single game. Yeah, if they score another goal, that might drop a little bit, but they'll be motivated. Mornham with the corner. Valtteri is up there, taken away from her by the height of Van Havermark. Very useful to have back there defending corners for you. Moritz, uh, the useful touch. Now, what about the cross? And the strike. Is blocked, saved by Maloney. Williamson got a boot to it. It's a good save from Grace Maloney. There's traffic in there, plenty of body bodies. It's not easy for the goalkeeper. It was a decent ball from Moritz. You can just see Leah Williamson holding her head in her hands. Williamson hasn't scored for Arsenal for a year now. Surprising. I thought she'd scored on Wednesday night, but it was ruled out. That's not entirely her primary objective in this team. But today in a midfield role. Yeah, it's a good play from Moritz there. She looks up exactly who she wanted to pick up. It's on Leah Williamson's left foot. Grace Maloney still has to save it. The last time she scored was last March here against Reading. Belty, Little. Just watch whenever Kim Little receives the ball. So much awareness of what's around her. This Ford, ambitious one, but without the power.
Well, you can just see here that Arso got 44% higher in, in, in Reading's defensive third. And certainly, that's definitely not a lie. They're, they're much more possession there. They're much higher up the pitch. They're just pinning Reading back. Rachel Rowe into Emma Harry's. Trying to play it in towards Wellings. Bryson. A piece of ball in will have Sinsberger. A little bit worried for a moment. It's a really good ball in. Sinsberger had a look. I don't think she realised it was it was as close to her. She just didn't bother going for it at all. All it needs is a Reading player just to creep in the back post there. Oh, can Reading test Sinsberger? Not on this occasion as Ford brings the ball away. And immediately looks for an attacking outlet. Arsenal players, plenty of movement. It's four driving through the centre, runs into trouble in my kith. It's it straight to Velty though. Arsenal in possession again with Williamson. Little. Ford. Here's Moritz. To Velty. Swiss international teammate. Unusually heavy touch from Williamson. She does well to win it back though. And Williamson finds Little. Looking to try to get the shot away, instead finds Moritz. And the cross towards Bean Reuter. Candy does just about enough there to put Bean Reuter off. This left hand side is far too much space out here for Moritz just to pick out her cross. Faye Bryson's got her hands full here because she's just getting overloaded as soon as the ball. Moritz here playing left back is just doubling up overlapping runs. Whether it's Ford or Kate McCabe out here, it's really difficult for the Redding defender. Emma McCandy just putting off Bean Reuter there. Known as Emma Mitchell when she was here for many years. Signed from them two years ago after winning six major trophies, including the 2019 WSL title. With her hubby Ivan here, the father of their beautiful baby daughter Innes. I still call her Mitchy. I just can't get used to the whole McCandy thing. It's just Mitchy to me. <laughs> I should mind you calling her that. I'll just have to stick to my candy if that's all right. <laughs> Scotland International. Seeing <laughs> Reuter for Arsenal. Just keeps it in play and has options in the centre. Ford's there. Really, really good play from Arsenal here. Great ball, but what a touch from Katie McCabe. She knew exactly where Bean Reuter was. Lovely little flick. It's an OK ball across. It's a little bit difficult because it's floating in the air, but prefer more of a whipped ball in behind the Reading defence. We haven't seen that many pullbacks here from Arsenal. Arsenal already had six shots on target so far. That's uh, joint highest in the WSL first half of the season. It's similar against Everton when they beat them 1-0 in December. 1-0 the scoreline here. Kim Little with a penalty. If you're joining us late, Grace Maloney got a fingertips to it. Turn away from my kid. Canada born defender. New to this Reading side. Starting a second successive league game for them. It's a clever foul from my kid. I mean, she, I think I did think she she went to, to win the ball, but Monham just did really well to use her body just to shield it. 
I think she's having a good game, Maya Keith. She's doing really well back there. She's doing well as when Monum or Kim Little just go in to receive the ball a bit deeper, she goes with them and she doesn't allow them to turn. Eichelund finds Charles Gart, plays it forward towards Wellings. Defending though by Wien Reuter finds her Austria teammate Sinsberger. Yeah, she did well, Wien Reuter. That's exactly what Reading need to do. They need to look up and have a look at that space in behind the Arsenal back four. Charlie Wellings can just get on her bike a little bit earlier, try to, to read that pass. It might cause more of a problem. Sinsberger and Wien Reuter, by the way. Won't be going to the World Cup as Ellen and Scotland beat them. And then they went and lost to who? And then what happened? <laughs> Republic of Ireland beat Scotland just a few days later, 1-0. We are the still Barrett goal. Celebrating. Still celebrating, are you? <laughs> Here's Moritz for Arsenal. Ford. An attack comes to nothing. Well, this is what we have to look forward to in the WSL. Everton versus Liverpool on Friday, March the 24th on Sky Sports Football. And another derby, Tottenham against Arsenal from Brisbane Road on Saturday, March the 25th. Join us from 2 o'clock for that one. And Manchester United against West Ham. Manchester United gunning for the title. Defeat at Chelsea today, Saturday, March the 25th. Fascinating matchups wherever you look in the Barclays WSL. One of the days when Emma Burns Arsenal used to win every single game of the season as you did all 22 league games back in the 2006-2007 season when you won the quadruple here including becoming champions of Europe I have to let you into a little secret I asked Emma just coming on before I went how many major trophies did you win here it's quite difficult to find out she said I have absolutely no idea so we've tried to work it out. We think it's 27 major trophies, 11 league titles, 10 FA Cups, 5 League Cups, and the Women's UEFA Cup, which is the equivalent to the Champions League. And here's Bean Reuter for Arsenal. The Continental Tires Cup winners last Sunday. Did that performance surprise you, Emma? It didn't surprise me, it relieved me because I find it frustrating watching Arsenal and them not perform to how they should or could. Ritz with a ball into the danger area. To Velti. Still Arsenal are piling on the pressure. Couldn't really force Maloney into too many difficult saves. There have been a couple of scrambles in the box. Nothing too clear cut. No, but there have been these kind of passes in there. They're, they have the possession up there. You can see you know, it's opening up for them, especially down this left-hand side with Moritz pushing forward. It's just the balls into the box. They're not really killer balls. They're not asking too much of the red in defence. But yeah, just last week with Arsenal, just I'm, I'm, I'm happy for them because they have the players, they have the style, they have that class about them. They should be playing like that. And if they were playing like that consistently, they'd be on top of this league. Because for me, they're one of the best footballing te teams in this league. Them along with Man City, to be quite honest. And it's just good to see that because they deserve it. They have the players and it's about time. They just need to be consistent with it. Get we're hungry time. tonight and here's Bubben Moy in the side tonight. A little too much on that for Wien Reuter. England international. We've got her wish this week, having written to the government asking for equal opportunities for young girls to be able to play football from an early age. And they got that wish this week on International Women's Day, she and the Lionesses signing that letter. Well, they could well have just been celebrating on the bus with coach Serena Wiegmann there, having won the 
Euros in the summer. Instead, they're already thinking, what can our legacy be? A practical legacy. Oh, that's a mistake. And here's Ford. Will they be punished? Will they be punished? Mornham blocked by Mike Hith. Back to Ford. Ford once again. Arsenal still knocking on the door. Williamson. Robin Moy. At the moment, Reading are really, really vulnerable in those wide areas. They're very, very narrow at the back. Little. She work an opening here with the skill that she has and the awareness. Belty. So far, Reading standing firm. Would like another few looks at that penalty award early on, by the way. To stay with us at half time, and it will be analysed to death, no doubt. And Karen Carney, Kelly Smith with Caroline in the studio. From what you've seen on it, is it definitely a penalty? I, I do you... want to see it again. No, I'm, it's def I'm not saying it's definitely a penalty. I, it looks like it's not a penalty, to be quite honest. But the angle's really difficult for us there. There are a lot of legs in there, so maybe KD could have been clipped ever so slightly. Morning. Has McCabe in the box, which is a long way away. Little's rather close up, and my kid gives away the corner. As much as Arsenal are enjoying the lion's share of the possession, they're doing really well. They're finding that space out in the wide areas, which is great. The crosses for me aren't good enough. The movement in the box isn't good enough. It's a little bit staggered, it's a little bit slow. I'd like to see a little bit more movement, a little bit more defining runs, like quicker into the box, make those runs, and then it's up to the, the crosser to, to make those crosses. Okay, with the corner. Eventually, it's booted clear. Side flag. Flags up over the far side. Assistant spotted something. Well, it's just, I think it's, it's that player, I think it's Ford on the keeper. Yeah, she just comes back out into play, affects it. That does tell you a story of the first half, 13 shots on the home side, Arsenal. Six on target. Outstanding saves that Grace Maloney's had to make, though. A few no, she she's had to, to make a save from Leah Williamson. That you know was pretty routine for for Grace Maloney. But I mean that's all about Arsenal. I've just said that they're you know they're enjoying the game. They're keeping possession, but they don't really have that deadly ball in that's really open and Reading up. You can see how nar narrow Reading are here. So Arsenal are feeding it into the wings. Lovely ball from Belty, finds McKay. What can they do here, Arsenal? Intercepted by Mike Kiss again, who's done well in this first half. She has, but that's a, that's a better ball from Katie McKay. It's low, it's drive, driven hard, and Maya Kiss had to do, to do some. She had to defend really well. So it's better just to get that ball early into the wide spaces and then cross the ball early in behind Reading. McCabe, who won that penalty, who's had the most touches in Reading's box. She's a player who loves to be involved in the thick of the action. The bigger the game, the more that Katie McCabe rises to the occasion. And certainly for us neutrals, we always hope to see her on the team sheet for those big games. No stranger to a challenge. No, she thrives, doesn't she? She loves it. You know. 
I think when Katie's on the bench, the opposition managers are, are, are quite happy, to be honest, and especially the big games where you've got the likes of Chelsea, who sometimes it is about aggression and having that mental battle on the field. And when Katie's there, she wins that all the time. And yes, she gets yellow, a lot of yellow cards. Um, but sometimes it's the bigger picture and just, you know, putting her foot in and getting about and, and, and being there, her presence just winning that battle. minutes to go until half time Arsenal looking for a second goal okay, let's have another look at that penalty incident oh she does she gets a little clip from behind my kit there if you just have a look at Katie's leg there just the slightest of touches I mean, she's clever. She's, Kate's clever. She knows when she gets into that area, they can't touch her. It was that first angle, wasn't it? I was at a referee seminar this week. So I love to spend my time. It was absolutely fascinating, genuinely. And the referee said, I'll give you a little tip. Whenever you're looking at a penalty incident and you want to decide whether there was a touch or not, always go for the angle behind the goal because that's where you see the magic. We saw there that looked the best angle. We'll see it a few more times at half time. The analysis in the studio. What do you think Kelly Chambers, the Reading manager, will have made of this first half? I think she'll be happy enough. Like, as I said, Arsenal, they, they, they haven't really opened them up a couple of times. But in general, I think she's going to ask her players when you win it back, can you keep it? particularly when you win it back higher up the pitch, just keep the ball, otherwise it's going to be a very long game chasing it. And, you know, they've done well. They're blocking the midfield. Kimmy's struggling to get on the ball, not as much as she'd want to anyway. So they have that covered. Now they have to just worry about the wide areas, and that's going to be difficult for them because, you know, if you are covering central areas, then you are vulnerable down the wide. And Arsenal have got such an array of players that can't cover everybody, unfortunately. We do have options on the bench with the likes of Lena Hurtick. Aiming to try and get in the goals. In the WSL hasn't happened for us so far. She's had an injury recently. And here come Arsenal once again. And makes it two. And finally, Arsenal have that second goal that has been coming. And it's 2-0 to Arsenal. Really lovely play. Then that right-hand side, lovely play for, from Bolte, I think it is, into Ford. Great ball in. Lovely ball in behind the Reading defence. Of course, she's not going to miss from there, Monum. Just wondering if she was offside. I'd like to see that line across there as well. from Arsenal. And that's Frida Mornham's first goal in her last eight games. She had scored five in three before that. And that's goals coming against Aston Villa in the Continental Cup quarter-final at the end of January. Playing in a centre-forwards role as a centre-forwards finish. to Reading. They've done pretty well to keep Arsenal at bay aside from that penalty. They've been up against it, had to concentrate so much defensively and this player in just a second WSL appearance. Cameroon international Esther Mai Kith has been busy.
Redinger without Deanne Rose, really talented Canada international, injured early in the season, out for the campaign. Massive blow for them. Player who scored that wonderful winner in yeah. their perspective against Chelsea last season. A real shock of the season. Yeah, huge, huge, and especially for a team like this that depends on these big players. Well, Katie McKay with driving force in the first half. She won the penalty, converted by Kim Little before Frieda Mornham added a second shortly before the break. And Arsenal are on the roll again, 2-0 at half-time. All the analysis to follow. Evening to everyone just joining us from Sky Sports Premier League. Arsenal two up on Reading and that race to tighten the places at the top of the WSL table. Kelly Smith, Karen Carney here. Let's start then with the first goal. Penalty incident. Was it a penalty, Kelly? Uh, it's so difficult to see by the, on these replays. We've watched it six or seven times, but I think Katie McCabe is very clever here. She knows there's going to have contact and I think she's bought it. She sold the referee this one. You know... There, there is no clear contact. The, the defender there has the hands on her. You'll see a clearer view here. She has hands, but Katie McCabe knows she wants it on her left foot. The contact's coming. I think it's very, very light. No penalty for me, but Arsenal got lucky on this one. Lucky, Karen? I'd have to agree, but Kate McCabe's in the penalty area. You, you don't blame her, really. You put defenders in that vulnerable position, but I'm with Kelly. I've seen multiple clips and I can't see whether it's her foot, whether it's the hand, but nevertheless, the referee has given it. Chances, shots, possession. Arsenal definitely uh, dominating that, that first half. The second goal deserved then. Uh, Frida Leonardo Mornham, we talked about action down the left hand side, but this comes from the right. Yeah, look, I think they've been really good in, in wide flat, wide areas. Kim Little popping up in that 10 position. They've been patient. Look, ready to find it really difficult to get pressure on the ball. Good build up, slow. Great little through ball there. And it's just a simple tap in there for Marlon down the back post. But I must say that the ball in, this little ball in here now from Walter. It's the weight Walty. of the pass, Kaz, just yeah. quality. And there can't well, be contact by Emma Mitchell there, McCandy. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. Forward there, this pass through here now. Mm. And because the, goal, the defender's the wrong side, she's scared again, Emma yeah. McCandy, to yeah. pull her down. So she has to loose off. And then it's just a simple ball across the six yard line. And Marlon's not going to miss from there. A little deflection maybe off the cross coming in, but 2 0. And it's been so easy for Arsenal in this first half. Can we have a little praise for McKay because she's been instrumental in, in a lot of the great work from Arsenal? She has. She's started on the right, but then she popped up on the left. She's been very influential. Little flicks here and there that are so, uh, successful. Um, she's a live wire. She's hungry. You know, she's, we said you know, off air that she'd always be the first, uh, one of the names down on the team sheet um, mm. for Kaz. But yeah, she's, she's, she has been phenomenal in this game, just popping up everywhere, making things happen. You know, one touch, popping off, getting the space, crossing balls in, very lively. Mm. Until you do that, eh? Give her a little push. <laughs> Would you go over? That'll be a question perhaps for after this one. At the moment though, Arsenal two goals to the good, five goals in the last ten and a half appearances for Kim Little. And they're all penalties and that's what Reading are paying at the moment. The Arsenal fans, they're happier then at the break. A couple of goals to warm them up. If you're a Reading fan though, Karen Carney, what do you want to see from your side? I mean, clearly you want goals, right? Yeah, definitely. It's difficult for them to score from open play. We've seen that with the stats this season. But what I would like to see them is press a little bit higher. Look, I know it's difficult against Arsenal, but I want to see principles that I would like to see them start to put in that you'd use against Brighton, Tottenham, um, Leicester in the next and up and coming games. So I want to see those principles suppressing. You've got Ch Charlie Welling, she can press, Harris can press. Just have a bit more of a go and be a bit more pra pragmatic in the second half. They've got the players to do it as Karen was saying, Kelly. Yeah, absolutely. Rachel Rowe, you know, we've seen her shoot from distance a lot this season and got quite a few goals, but, you know, she hasn't really tested. Zimsberger hasn't been tested, so for, for Harris, for Wellings, for Rowe, just to get a couple of shots on target. Uh, they haven't had a shot. Uh, this first 45 minutes, um, Zinsberg has you know, really relaxed and hasn't had much to do. So test the keeper. Test the keeper, as we will Emma Byrne. One of Arsenal's finest is in commentary alongside Jackie Oak. Thank you very much, Caroline. Yes, welcome back to a drizzly meadow park. Arsenal dominant in that first half and Reading the only side without an away point this season. And they'll have to produce something pretty spectacular in the second half if they're to change that. But bearing in mind, Emma Byrne, that they didn't even have a touch in the Arsenal box in that first half, it's looking rather unlikely. Yeah, I mean, it, that's ridiculous, really. And you can see here, actually, Grace Maloney, and I'm really sure she's saying, get the ball in the box. Um, it's how they're going to score. Yes, we've seen Rachel Rowe shoot from distance, but... 
they have to get up there. They have to keep the ball, first of all. That needs to, to change, and those are basic things. Keep the ball. If they have to recycle it, recycle it, and try and build to get into that area in Arsenal. But, yeah, no touches in the box in the first half. It's, a crazy, it's, it's just ridiculous. They need to do better. Oh, that is an extraordinary stat. Another unhelpful one from a Reading point of view is that Arsenal, the only side not to have lost a second half in the WSL this season. Let's see how they fare now. We're back underway under the lights. Not so bright lights, it has to be said. At Meadow Park in Hertfordshire. Raffaele played well in that first half. Look at the class of the Brazil captain. Runs into trouble, though. Uh, more intent now from Rachel Rowe with a strike and the deflection. And Sinsberger with an early touch. Well, straight away, it's better, isn't it? That's it. That counts as a strike on goal, surely. It's good pressing, and that's where it came from, that, that initial press just closing down. Raffaele tried to run out with the ball, but you can see the amount of blue and white shirts around them, and that's, that's exactly what they need to do, Reading. They need to come out here, come out of the boxes, put pressure on Arsenal, and then that... That will make, that will create chances for them. What a Vuben Moy for Arsenal, this slightly loose pass intended for Veen Reuter. You can just tell that the Reading players have either had a flea in their ear or given each other or themselves a flea in the ear in the dressing room at half time. Yes, they're expected to lose this game, or not particularly necessarily take a point from it, but they'll certainly want to compete better than they did in that first period. But then it's those times that they really need to do better and keep the ball. Williamson driving forwards, and Mornham's in here again! It's an own goal! And straight from the restart, Reading had tried to make something happen in the opposition box, but it's Emma McCandy, the captain, who's put through her own goal. And Arsenal, three goals to the good, is surely now three points to the good. Yeah, it's unfortunate for Emma McCandy. She's not happy, and to be fair to her, if she didn't get Anthony on it, it would have been a goal anyway. But it comes from Reading in possession. A really poor ball into the middle there, really difficult. Good ball in from Leah Williamson. The ball is on the way to, to Ford. Yes, McCandy puts it in the back of her net, but if she didn't touch it, it would have been a goal anyway. Frieda Mornham involved once again. Looking for Caitlin Ford. And the former Arsenal player, Emma Mitchell, as she was when she played here. Will be very disappointed, but as Emma says, what a huge amount she could have done in terms of had she left it, and Caitlin Ford would have gobbled up the opportunity at the far post. That driving run from Leah Williamson, usually at centre half these days, has played big chunks of her career in midfield, relishing the opportunity to drive forward and make something happen. And now will have really taken the wind out of Reading's sails. Yeah, it's unfortunate because, you know, it was Reading that handed them that goal. You cannot play a ball into midfield like that when Arsenal are pressing so high. It was 4-0 here last season. Arsenal aiming for something similar again. Bravo, Leah! time ago now that Leah Williamson was expected to start in midfield for England at the Euros. It seemed to be a fairly late change and she certainly didn't feel too comfortable doing that when we played at centre half for Arsenal. And had a chat with the manager about it, Serena Wiegmann, who's here, and the rest, as they say, is history. Sometimes it's a good idea as a player to speak your mind, what do you reckon? I mean, you have to have that confidence to do it, but you know, Leah can play in midfield, she can do a job in there, but she is a centre-back, and I think for Leah as well, she she needs to have that consistent position. She needs to, to perfect that position, and, I'm, you know, she could be one of the best in that position, but you need consistency in playing there, so 
She's an intelligent girl. She knows what she needs. It's Leah Williamson OBE now. The services to football. Here's Caitlin Ford. More energy forwards. Bean Reuter. Another deflection. More Arsenal bodies forward. And there was Moritz that time. Looking for a rare, rare goal from her perspective. Still hasn't scored in the WSL. And this is her 40th appearance. Yeah, so it's, you know, little things like that that Reading need to get better at. You can see that Emma McCandy is trying to track Ford back, but Wien Reuter is, is doubling up. And the centre-backs or a central player needs to get out there quick, quicker and help their defenders out. And they're not doing it. It's too slow. They're too slow to get out there and just giving Arsenal way too much time to pick their, their crosses. Clay Bryson, Reading. Great conditions for the players with a swirling wind and rain with Emma Harry's on the chase. Harry's a lifelong Arsenal supporter. Her dad a huge fan and he coached her right from the age of four when she asked at nursery if she could play football. Even though she's only 20 now, she still had to play in boys' teams. Queen Reuter for Arsenal deflected off Evans. Evans and the flag is up. Reuter with the ball forwards for that's Morgan. That's really tight. I'm not sure she is offside there. I mean, it's a great finish from Monum because she didn't know she was. Playing makeshift centre forward with Beth Mead and Viviana Miedemar out. Stina Blackstetnis on the bench after injury. has been a lot made of Arsenal not signing a striker in January. High profile pursuit of Lesia Russo, whose contract is about to expire at Manchester United, but to be said, uh, I've been told that they did agree terms on three forwards, two strikers and one wide forward. They would have allowed Caitlin Ford to then play as a striker. But for circumstances beyond their control, the club, yes, the offside flag goes up again. They weren't able to complete those signings. I think, um, I think it's, it was a problem mentally for Arsenal. They made such a big deal out of it. They have got goal scorers in the team. They don't have to have an out-and-out -out number nine. Monum's a perfect false nine if she stays up there. And then she has perfect players around her to, to, to move into those positions. If you look at you know, one of the best teams in the world, is in Barca play, their number nine never stays as a nine. They always drift in, drift out. The front three always change positions. They move lots and lots of movement in the midfield, even in the defence. So it's too much emphasis on the fact they don't have an out-and-out -out striker. It's just all about movement and connecting as a team, which they're doing much better recently, by the way, and just allowing that freedom for the players. Well, Mornham hasn't exactly played ball with that tonight, has she? And here's four. Little with a flick. All this talk about Kim Little being a veteran, by the way, at the age of 32. I remember watching her at Wickham's Adams Park playing for Scotland when she was 16. She'd only just made her debut. She was playing against England. And all the talk was about this player to watch when she was at Hibs. And what a superstar she's going to become. I just refuse to call her that because... <laughs> That's me admitting that I'm a complete granny. <laughs> She's still young, plenty of life left in her, a couple of years left anyway. There's Harry's, better in at 20. By the way, Kimmy Little has never been a proper 17 year old. I remember when she came to the club, she was so calm on the ball so confident you know we were in awe of her her being 17 and us being veterans let's say she's always had that cool head on her shoulders way more responsible than me anyway okay, she didn't even have a break last summer well, others were in euros internationals etc or having a holiday she was 
playing in the United States for Laura Harvey at OL Rain. She hasn't stopped. She's certainly showing no signs of tiring. And I think that was down to her retiring from international duty. I think she decided to do that because she wasn't getting those breaks. And now she does have breaks in the season. It, it isn't a bad idea. And it was an absolutely brilliant idea, the fact that we played Scotland in the playoffs, because if Kim Little was playing, who knows what would have happened. Well, Amy Fern. He's showing the yellow card, we think, to Grace Maloney. I think Grace was just having a few words. I don't think she agreed with that. Well, it is a free kick to Arsenal. And it is a dangerous position when you bear in mind the players they have in the box. They have Caitlin Ford in there. Paelli's up in the back. There's only Noelle Moritz anywhere near the centre circle. And Little waiting to pounce just outside the box as Mornham, who's been involved in everything today so too has katie mccabe who won that penalty to make up your own minds at home on it burn thinks it possibly was i'm going with katie because uh, a penalty karen and kelly in the studio couldn't see the contact morning with the free kick into Raffaele and maloney's equal to it Decent ball in from Monum. Really difficult for the goalkeeper there, Grace Maloney. She made the right decision to stay. Many goalkeepers would come out there and try and get something on them, and it could have been a problem, but it was a good decision. Evans with the boot forward for Harry's to chase. Clearly dealt with by Arsenal. Robin Moy or Tinsberger. You know, that's what I would do if I were Reading. That's what I do every single time. I would ask Harris just to stay up there in the last player and I'd just boot it along for a little while. Just opens up the game, stretches the game, and then they can play a little bit in midfield if they want. But you can see that, that Arsenal struggle with that ball. It's the only thing they're struggling with tonight. It's that ball over the top, a little bit more pressure from Reading. Substitutions for Reading as off comes number 27. Sanna Trollsgaard Justine is coming on. Denmark international. Justine van Havenmaat of Belgium coming off. She's been pretty useful and in defence in particular, the tall angular fielder. Emma Harry's the other player going off. And Lily Woodham, who's back after illness, a left back coming on. So let's see how those changes affect the play. Trollsgaard more of a an attacking midfielder and play up front. And Wood in the Wales International. Usually a left back. Yeah, I think she was more of a makeshift left back to be honest when Reading was struggling with their right back. They put Mukandi over there and put Wooden back there and she did really, really well. I think that Kelly Chambers has just brought her in there just to help Mukandi back there because Arsenal again and a lot of joy down this right hand side and the goals have come from this right hand side so just to, to make sure <laughs> limit those damage. Woodham is very good at going forward as well. Scott off the bench, by the way, plenty of experience at the age of 34 and played under Jonas Aderbal at Rosengård. He said of her that she has really good technique. Few players can match her on a day, she just needs to be more consistent. tonight will she get an opportunity as Arsenal come forwards once again maintain their ambition throughout the hour or so that we played 
foul on Katie McCabe there. She wasn't happy with that tackle from Faye Bryson. Just a little bit late. You can just see by Katie's reaction. She wasn't very happy, but she needs to, to calm it as well. What a good shift Frieda Mornham has put in tonight. Right back, Bean Reuter is off as well. And Blackstenius just coming to some form now. The Sweden striker coming on and the Netherlands international Victoria Kolova. Signing Ajax. He started the last couple of games. Getting a rest tonight. Looking to make an impact as a sub. with the free kick he was there still running haven't managed to clear it back in by ford puts it to little there's urban moy in the right wing position back to little thought about taking it first time it a clever ball from moving moy back to kim i don't think kim was expecting it to be honest Candy. He's been very vocal about maternity rights for female players in the game. Having her baby. Oh, it's a good through ball to Blackstenius. What can she do? She's only just come off the bench. Oh, and it was straight at Maloney. It's another bite of the cherry. And Blackstenius still perhaps a little cold, having just come on as a sub. What a ball through from Williamson. Absolutely what a ball. stunning. Water ball, and you know what? This is what Black Sinius for me does best. She is brilliant at running off the shoulders of defenders, even more so running into the channels. She has to score from there. It maybe I'm being a bit harsh as she's just come onto the pitch, but what she does excellently there is just running in off the shoulder of the defenders into that space. Goalkeeper involved again. Grace Maloney's had a lot to do in the last couple of minutes. Still Arsenal pushing for that fourth goal. Didn't play in the reverse fixture in October when Jackie Burns saved the penalty from Kim Little. Such a rarity. Yeah, I think Grace Maloney is doing really well to keep Jackie Burns out because I think Burns did really, really well when she was in there. She'd certainly be asking her manager that question, knocking on the door. But Grace Maloney's been such a long servant to, to Reading and she's a good keeper. Kim Little. They get Rachel Rowe on the ball, and you're not going to get her on the ball with a pass like that. She's looking for it to feet. She's in space. She can get it to feet there. See, she's getting frustrated. She isn't getting any service up there at all, really. Great reaction, Kim! Charlie Wellings at all either, have we? Williamson with another fabulous ball through, and it's Pullover, another substitute. Might need some support. She has Black Stenius. Those two have seen plenty of action already. Getting straight into the thick of the action. Great ball from Williamson again. Really lovely long range pass in there. Pullover did well to keep it and bring Blackstenius in again. Be asking more of Blackstenius. Oh, that's a painful one. Looks to be a blow to the face, and the referee's always going to stop the play when that happens. To McCabe. Took a 
Painful one there. And nothing wrong with her at all. <laughs> Arsenal supporters showing their appreciation. Established group of supporters here, aren't they? though isn't it from Arsenal that swift movement that's when they're at their best just moving the ball really quickly good ball out to Kate McCabe I mean she plays that ball in she's excellent at that just finding those players behind to the defensive lines Little Goodman Moy for another goal scored in both games against Reading so far it's another free kick another foul on McCabe for Arsenal. Pull over. <laughs> Defending by Woodham. Trolls guard. Tries to find a fellow substitute. Intercepted and it's more pressure from the players in red. Moritz finds Blackstenius. Pull over. So Williamson has been outstanding today. I'm going to ask you for your player of the match just yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if she was in your thinking. She, she is. I've just, I was just thinking about it there. There are two, so I'll uh, have another little think about that. But just in, in regards to, to, you know, Leah, I mean, she's just, look at this stat, successful final passes. Leah Williamson is up there. She's excellent there. One of her, one of the best in the world as in passing ranges, and she's shown that here tonight, clearly. And whether she's playing centre back or midfield, Excellent. I wonder what Serena Wiegmann's thinking, seeing Leah Williamson playing so well in central midfield. Probably thinking it's great that my captain's such a good footballer, whether she's at centre half or midfield. She's thinking it's great to have that option. And Rachel Daly as well. I mean, she has a couple of players that are quite versatile, but you don't, that's the thing, players don't want to be versatile. They want their position and they want to keep it. Rachel Daly up front, what would you do? Certainly, yeah. Uh, I'd certainly be definitely thinking about Rachel Greenwood left back, who's had an excellent season. Yeah, Rachel Greenwood doing well. Victoria Palova. Runs into traffic, McCabe. Ford. Nice little with it. Still Caitlin Ford. Blackstenius in the centre. And it's in. It is for. Leah Williamson with her first goal in a year and how she richly deserves that. A fine performance from Williamson and it's four for Arsenal just as it was here last season. Yeah, I mean, I think that's made up my mind to be quite honest. She's done really, really well tonight. Right place, right time. Just look at her here, just creeping in the back post. Emma Bugandi knows she's there. She's got her in her sights. It's actually a brilliant save by Grace Maloney initially. And, and unlucky for Reading, it has to be said. Great save from Maloney. It just fell for Leah Williamson at the right time. And great to see her getting on the, go the, the score sheet. How good does Ford do there? Just head down, just travel, get into those areas. A pullback yeah. like we were asking for in the first half. And certainly celebrated that. 
like she enjoyed it. What a week it's been for Leah Williamson. It's the week after winning her sixth major trophy with Arsenal. Player from Milton Keynes. It's red and white through and through. And she deserved that goal as well. One chalked off in midweek against Liverpool. It looks as though it's going to be seven wins out of seven in the WSL at home for Arsenal against Reading. Yeah, and even more importantly, the third consecutive win. And I'm sure that's it. That's a milestone they were desperate to reach just for consistency. mentality they are in ruthless mood tonight and four doesn't feel enough for them at the moment that's when confidence is high Emma after that win last weekend and then following it up with that 2-0 win against Liverpool on Wednesday yeah the knowing only you have to win every game pretty much as well yeah from now to the end of the season but the only thing I was worried about is their consistency you know I really wanted Jonas Eideville to be able to step to stick with the same 11 but obviously that couldn't happen this will do them the world of good barely underneath it Hubbard Moy is allowed to bounce in the box Williamson with a flick on the offside flag goes up Substitution and it is Leah Williamson who has put in a fine performance at Meadow Park tonight. Capped it off with a goal. And her through balls have been outstanding. Her passing from a midfield role tonight has been nothing short of sensational. And it's Katrine Kuhl, a Danish player who will come on, and a Sweden international, Lena Hertig, coming on for Caitlin Ford, who's also worked incredibly hard. Yeah, great game for both of those players, Williamson and Ford. They've been really, really excellent tonight. Just class performance. Ford was excellent as well. Her work rate is phenomenal. And I just think sometimes she goes a little bit under the radar, but her runs and her movement, her assists. She's got Stenius. Mike Kiff now out of position and Hurtig. I think she's also been very, very good tonight. Maya Kitt there for Reading. She's been busy, that's for sure. It's cool. The problem for me with Reading is they just can't seem to keep a hold of the ball. To me as a defender, if, if my team kept giving the ball away, really making my life difficult. Rachel Rose, such an important attacking force for them. Gets it back from Woodham. Now, what can Rachel Rowe do? She's doing really well, Rowe, and it clips the top of the crossbar on its way over. And that's the closest that Reading have come tonight. Yeah, it's just a shame for Reading that they couldn't get her on the ball a little bit more, because you can see what she can do. Really nice play between her and Woodham. You can't, you know, you just can't ride her off. She, Really lovely turn back onto her left foot. She knows exactly where the goal is. Not too far away, is it? Joint top scorer in the WSL for Reading this season with three, along with Charles Guard here and Wellings. And Lucandi, three own goals. <laughs> is that a bit cruel? Some former teammate you are. <laughs> she you won't mind, she won't mind me saying sure? <laughs> Pull over, one of these substitutes looking to make an impact. Loses her balance in the challenge with Woodham. Charles Guard retains possession. And what can Reading do here? What about bodies in the box and they can't keep it. Now 
to chase back all the way up by the other end of the pitch. And to get through a lot of work tonight, Reading, in a defensive capacity. I mean, that's that's quite soul-destroying, that. You know, they've put in a really good shift in here, especially the, the first 45 minutes. They worked so hard, and they did really well. They are organised really well. There comes a certain point when it's just Arsenal keep coming at you, coming at you. you. Just need to keep the ball, and I think that's you know that's the major issue here with Reading. But as I said before, this game isn't the important one. It's the important, the really important ones are the Tottenham, the Brightons, the Leicesters. They have to, they have to get three points in those games. Clover, Moritz. Reading are at home to Chelsea in the FA Cup next Sunday. And then they have two huge matches against Brighton at home and Leicester away. And as soon as this game is over, no doubt Kelly Chambers will be thinking ahead to those games. Yeah, tough, tough game against Chelsea in that FA Cup quarter-final. As things stand at the bottom of the table, it's Leicester underneath the dotted line, one relegation place with seven points, Brighton one point above them, but with a game in hand, and Tottenham just one point above them. two points above relegation having played the same number of games as Leicester in bottom spot not many of us saw that coming when they went away at Brighton and here's another good through ball and it's Black Stenny surely surely oh dear oh dear what a great ball as well from Cool. she did really well in the middle there just looks up what a ball from her Again, it's a good run, good run from Blackstenius, really good. And I mean, she did leave it difficult for herself, that touch out wide. But again, she'd be disappointed with that. Grace Maloney does, does well to, to, to push her out a little bit wider. Oh, we did expect that net to bulge, but just too much on the touch wide of Maloney. Do you give the goalkeeper credit there? Absolutely. <laughs> or am I asking a oh, very silly day. question? The legendary goalkeeper. <laughs> Every time. The Republic of Ireland goalkeeper. I'll be hoping to go to the World Cup. And they kick off against the hosts Australia on the 20th of July in Sydney. What an opportunity for her, and Diane Caldwell as well, who's on the bench for Reading tonight. They also play against Ireland. Sabrina D'Angelo and Diane Rose. Canada players, Bev Priestman, their English coach. Winner of gold medal in the Olympics as well, and they have Nigeria in their group. Leah Williamson's England kick off against Haiti on the 22nd of July. And also have Denmark, Sam Trollsgaard, and Katrine Kuhl's team, as well as China in their group. Here is Trollsgaard, Denmark International. What can Reading do here? Can they get a consolation? So, so close for Rachel Rowe. Play, isn't it? Burger hasn't really had a save to make, but that's the closest. Good play, it's nice play. It's the one time we see the fullbacks getting forward. And if you want it to fall to anyone, it's going to be Rachel Rowe. Close. I'd like to see them score just to give them that little bit of lift. Seem content with the four goals so far. I would love to get another one. Our substitutes and trying to make something happen as well. Moritz 
back in a usual right back position now that Ben White has gone off. And here's Kuhl. Lovely ball in towards Pilova. Good play by Maloney, the goalkeeper. I can definitely give her credit for that one, can't I? She did really well to come out there because Pilova was in. Little bit more in towards Kuhl. Interesting to watch the number 22 for Arsenal, the shock of blonde hair. Described as one of the best 19-year-olds in the game to me earlier when I was talking to somebody at the club that signed her. Of course they're going to say that, right? <laughs> Do they sign her? <laughs> she has well, there was plenty of competition <laughs> for her. She is very good. You can see already little sparks in her game from North Shayland in January. I'd like to see more of her. I'd like to see more of her and Pilova get a few more minutes just to settle in. It's really difficult, isn't it, to come into a, a team and just get minutes here and there and to be able to show your, your talent. Moritz, Pilova's made a run for it. Still Arsenal piling on the pressure, no let up, no mercy. Get the impression they won't be happy unless they've got number five. There's a ball forward from Cool in towards Pilova. Hey! 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 there and Maloney spilled it. Bailed out though at the last second. Great ball in, absolutely lovely delivery. Katie McCabe, really difficult keeper, can't come out, come out for it. We did well enough to, to, to get the save, but came off her defenders, helped her out there. Well, the thing did come out so positively right at the start of the second half. It looked as though they'd regrouped in the dressing room. They're really going to give it a go, but that lasted just a matter of seconds, really. There's Emma McCandy, who's forced into that own goal. Since then, it's been usual service resumed from Arsenal. Yeah, I mean, it, it's been difficult for them, and goals changed. That kills that motivation and that desire. Rachel Rowe doing incredibly well, battling away, but... Arsenal come away with it. It's Black Stenius. She was pulled back by McCandy. Yeah. Having have a lot of experience in that midfield in the shape of Jade Moore. I mean, 50 caps for England. In the second spell of the club on loan from Manchester United. Gio coming on now, the Brazil international, still the fair bounce of talent. Drives off the bench for Arsenal as Leo Balti's work is done. Well, speaking, speaking about midfield, I mean, Arsenal have the best midfield in the country. It's so difficult for, for Reading, these players, to, to keep up with that. Leah Volti, we haven't spoken about her, but we should because she had an excellent game as well. She does nothing wrong and she's always there doing the, the, the dirty work so all the other players around her can enjoy that freedom. And of course, Kim Little just swings for herself. Here is Gio, looking to make something happen straight away. Full of beans, and here's Cool, another substitute. Excuse the pass, picked up by Rachel Rose. A real lease of life in this second half. A tired pass there though. Now cool. Denmark teenager. More. That's you, Nina. It's perhaps slightly easier for Arsenal to attract 
international talent when they can show them their brand new performance hub at London Colney. Multi million pound facility for them. Previously, they had to wait until the men had effectively finished their ice baths, etc. And now they have their own the hub. Yes, I remember six. that. <laughs> All the facilities like in your day, they were leading the way in those days, weren't they? Absolutely. And Leah Williamson will remember that she was there as well. She's definitely my player of the match. I think she's been excellent playing that role in midfield, scoring the goal, those passes, it's been incredible. And Gio was certainly pulled back by Lily, Lily Woodham, who runs as far away from the referee as she can, thinking, if I just run away, maybe she won't book me, unfortunately for her. That plan didn't work. He did try to allow play to continue while Gio was still in possession. Woodham's done well. She come on, she won't mind getting a yellow card. She's physical, she's been aggressive. I wonder whether Arsenal are going to get a chance to enjoy the 18 bottles of champagne which have been sent to them from the Arsenal board as a result of their victory last Sunday. They don't look as though they've enjoyed any of it as yet, but they do have a little gap now. Things are not playing in the FA Cup next weekend until they play away at Bayern Munich in the Allianz Arena a week on Tuesday before that game against Spurs in the WSL. And then they're at the Emirates on Wednesday, March the 29th for the return leg of that Champions League quarter-final against Bayern. Champagne. If they were to get through that. Champagne on hold, I think, Jackie. <laughs> Even a little sip tonight without a game for nine days, no? Maybe wait till the end of the season. They've got some work to do. Three points here will take them three points behind Manchester City in third with a game in hand on them and also a game in hand on Manchester United. And the same number of points as City in second. And Chelsea at the top of the pile, 37 points, and they have a game in hand. Gio again for Arsenal. No ball this time, easily dealt with by Evans. The last thing stand, Arsenal moving five points behind the leaders, Chelsea, having played the same number of games. in three games in the league, losing against Manchester City, drawing against Chelsea and West Ham. But that win against Liverpool after winning the League Cup on Sunday and now a comfortable victory here and suddenly things are looking up for Arsenal. Yeah, I really think that League Cup win against Chelsea and just the manner and the way they won and their performance will kickstart their, their, their season when they need it most to be honest, and I think they just needed that kind of performance to get that confidence and, and to show that they are of that, that calibre. You played in the last cup final at Selhurst Park for Arsenal, didn't you, back in 2001? Did I? I? Win against, uh, <laughs> I was there on my crutches with my football team, I remember it well. Andrew yeah, Banks I remember with the winner it. against a brand new full-time Fulham at the time, which only lasted four years before Mohamed Al-Fayed and back part-time. Viv Akers was very happy that he'd beaten the side with the money, he said at the time. He says, see, Very money doesn't buy you everything. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Legendary Arsenal manager now, Pelova. Cool. 
This is the new breed of gunners. And they're hungry for trophies. Rowe. from Reading now, the fact they've been really up against it from the first whistle with Arsenal being in the mood, it's very difficult for them tonight. Absolutely, they're absolutely exhausted out there. When you're chasing the ball around, when you don't have possession, it's a very tiring game and they haven't had the luxury of keeping the ball and, you know, Arsenal are so good at moving the ball around and they're happy just to keep passing around them. Reading just have to chase. Of course, you're 4-0 down mentally, you just don't want to fight anymore. They'll be looking for this whistle to go. There'll be a minimum of three minutes to be added on here. Arsenal's work. The Lions share is done now. Good night at the office for Arsenal women. Emirates, and still they pile forwards with intent and ambition. Uh, Gio got that one all wrong. Each of these players trying to push in a starting place for themselves. It's very difficult, despite the injuries they have to Mead and Miedemark. It's still difficult trying to work your way into this. Arsenal first 11 for the likes of Cool and Gio. Yeah, these it's young talent. players, right? Young players that are just waiting for their chance, but there's plenty of time for that. And Gio has certainly shown that she's got something, isn't she? Her runs have been really good into those channels. Final ball, not so great as you've just seen, but something for her to learn. She's excellent at, at Barca as well. She was definitely a huge prospect there. I think she's been a really good signing for Arsenal. Yeah, it cost around £35,000 from Barcelona in September without any senior appearances there, but she certainly has talent, born in Brazil. And moved to Florida, then Spain, could have played for those countries, but she's opted for Brazil. And the ball from a lone spell at Everton, looking to make her mark here in this talented Arsenal side. But they're playing catch-up. They have to make every single game count now. Remaining eight fixtures of this short 22 game campaign. As the rain continues to swirl around. At Meadow Park. And it has been a convincing performance from Arsenal. With a break now in the league. Until they play the North London derby. On the 25th of March. So your player of the match, Leah Williamson then, I guess? Yes, I think I said it, I said it too early. Listen, I think, I think Velti's been excellent in midfield. I think Kate McKay was definitely up there. She has had a brilliant game, but I just think for, for Leah Williamson to, bit, to be playing in that midfield role, just her range of passing, she pops up with the goal. I think she deserves it tonight. And there is the final whistle. A very good night for Jonas Edeval and Arsenal and a very good week for them as well after winning the Continental Cup, beating Liverpool here 2-0 on Wednesday and now putting Reading to the sword 4-0 tonight with goals from Kim Little from the penalty spot and Frieda Marnham, a makeshift striker. Emma McCandy could do nothing about the own goal. And then Leah Williamson, player of the match, Four stars for Arsenal tonight, and Reading will have easier days than this one and against a group of richly talented players. Emma McCandy against her former side, who were just too good for Reading tonight, and it's finished here at Meadow Park. Arsenal four, Reading nil. Jackie, Emma, thank you. Kelly Smith, Jackie said it there about the quality of the Arsenal players. Just told in the end. Absolutely. I just think, you know, Arsenal was showing positive signs of relationships, um, forming more in the more attacking final third. They just seemed more rhythm, more, more cohesion. Um, you know, to get a goal so early, I think, 
coming off the back of that Conti Cup final, they were really, really confident in today's game. Started the game really well on the front foot, got that early penalty. Um, and then the confidence started flowing. I think that massive win, that Conti Cup, has, has really, I guess, released the pressure off this Arsenal side, winning this first trophy in four years. And Leah Williamson there, outstanding. You know, any time that she plays, she's a quality player. We know that the captain of England. On? I don't know what's going on there, little cuddle. Is that um, stop her getting wet? <laughs> I mean, she's that good a player, Karen, that she has her own personal umbrella everywhere she goes. Looks like she has. Um, no, but look, going back to, to Arsenal's performance, I think that's the most fluid I've seen them in a very, very long time. And then there's definitely been a shift in the feel good factor. And maybe it's the release of, of winning the trophy last week and the pressure maybe and going, look, we can kick on from here because the first is, is one of the hardest trophies you can win and now you kick on with it. Um, but brilliant performance and just they just seem a real togetherness and team spirit which is really pleasing and I'm sure the fans will be thrilled as well. It seems such an obvious shift, doesn't it? The, the smiles on their faces, some of the balls that were played in, the freedom. It's the, it's the, fo the style of football as well. Sometimes throughout the season I don't know the style in which they've played at times. I've tried to be working it out but you know, I was looking at some of the midfield clips, they're all fluid, they all know each other and there's been changes in that midfield today but look, she's Kim Little, she's absolutely unbelievable. Leadership, catalyst, and in everything they do defensively, offensively, like Kelly showed before the show. But too little, too late, though? No. Too little. They've, they've got Chelsea and Manchester City to play, and look, in the Champions League with Bayern Munich coming up, there is a feel-good factor, and for him, he's got one trophy under his belt now, so I think he's got to kick on with that. Agree? Absolutely, yeah. As I said, you know, that has really taken the pressure off these players to get that trophy in the cabinet. Um, good team performance tonight, really comfortable, composed, in control for major parts of this game. You know, when you're when Katie McCabe's pulling out these little flicks and tricks, you know things are good for you because you had that confidence, uh, like Kaz mentioned. So, yeah, really delightful performance for them tonight. Vital three points. We will focus on Reading in just a bit as well because a huge result when it comes to the bottom of the table. Let's take a look at the weekend's results. This one rounding things off, and it started with a match that Jonas Idol said he wasn't going to have a look at and that was Chelsea beating Manchester United by a goal to nil. Manchester City a late winner from Bunny Shaw in that one. She's actually now become the highest goal scorer in the season for Manchester City. 2-1 winners at Brighton. Liverpool came from behind to beat Spurs and I talked about the bottom of the table. Leicester picking up a point against Everton. How crucial could that prove come the end of the season? Which leaves your WSL table looking like this. It's Sunday night, so they're in Leicester at the bottom. Brighton do have that game in hand. Tottenham in all sorts of bother now. Nine matches uh, since they last picked up a point. Nine defeats on the bounce for Spurs. And Reading then in ninth. Arsenal fourth in the table. Three points off those European places. The FA Cup coming up next weekend, but for you next week, we've got Inside the WSL with Jess and the team, 6.30 on Thursday, followed by the Championship Show. And then Women's Football Weekend kicks off with a couple of real spicy double headers. Uh, Everton against Liverpool on Friday night before Spurs, Arsenal, North London Derby on Saturday, and Manchester United, West Ham. Manchester United still pushing for that title. Scotty Scheffler still leading the pack in the Players' Championship. Sky Sports Golf now to watch the latest from there. And prepare yourself for the Oscars tonight. Sky Cinema, the likes of Top Gun Maverick. You can watch all those quality films on Sky Cinema now. As for the Gunners, no red carpet laid out for Reading. The Royals downed by four goals as Arsenal fire themselves back into contention. Complete foursome from Arsenal as they go three points off the top three. Two nil up at half time. Goals in that first half from a penalty spot as well. Leah Williamson rounded things off with the fourth on the night. We'll talk penalties, we'll talk shots, we'll talk chances, but look at that for Arsenal. 26 to 3, the most shots on target that they've had this season and their highest expected goals. Also the most shots that Reading have faced this season in the WSL. Defender, midfielder, 
goal scorer extraordinaire. Leah Williamson joins us live on Sky Sports. Leah, Karen and Kelly are going to ask you the crucial questions, but I need to know, you're walking around with a human umbrella. Are you shielding from the rain, then? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even answering that anymore. Uh, good, because Karen's going to wind you up about your hair further. No, I just, I just want to, I haven't seen you in a while, I just want to congratulate you on the work that you've done for the government announcement for young girls to have equal access in schools and PE for two hours. I think it's just phenomenal. But is it a case now that you can stop doing societal issues and just play and enjoy your football and pick up trophies like you have been doing the last few weeks? I think that's the aim, isn't it, that we get to a point where hopefully all we're focusing on is the football. But whilst there's things to fight for, um, I'd be doing everybody that came before me a dishonour if I didn't do that. But, yeah, hopefully one day we won't, we won't need us speaking out on things. Everybody else will be doing it for us. Has there been a, a shift over the last couple of weeks in, in the dressing room for you guys? Because... It seems like it has from watching from afar with your performances. Yeah, I think, you, you, you know, sometimes where you can't really explain it, it's a bit of a feeling and you just need it to click. And we've, we've been together as a, almost a family for a long time. Like, there's never been any issues there. But sometimes when you get that on the pitch as well, you can just see a shift and, and a change in everybody. And I think everybody believes. Leah, I've just got to ask you one question. Obviously, you know how much I love you and um, <laughs> respect you as a footballer. You know how much I love you, <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> um, but... You know, you're outstanding centre-half, quality uh, midfielder. What's your preferred position? Where would you see your career ending up? Or you, you don't mind playing both positions. You like being versatile. What's, what's your favourite position, though? I think my favourite is centre-half. Um, in terms of just being comfortable, and I feel like if you talk about taking my game to new limits, I know, I think I know what I need to do there to do that. And I'm... You know me, I'm a person that's constantly trying to push and get better. Yeah. Whereas in the middle, sometimes I don't really know. But hopefully I can do a job when a team needs me to do it. Leah, what would those bits be then that would take you to that next level that you foresee? Because, I mean, you've, you've done pretty well from what we've been seeing. <laughs> I think I've made myself consistent and um, you sort of know what you're going to get from me. But I think to, to be the best is the decision-making is... It's bringing everything, you know, when, when do I defend, when do I play and when do I use my super strengths, which I, I think is on the ball to, to help the team, but also when do I just need to do, do my job as a defender. What about scoring goals then? It's always weird in football <laughs> the way that this happens. It was a year ago, March 2022, your last goal, and it was against Reading. Let's have a look at the, the one tonight. Talk us through it. Yeah, I think it's a bit of desperation from me, actually. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I've made about five runs, five runs into the box before this. <laughs> Does right yeah, we'll take it. Yeah, no, you're in the right place at the right time, aren't you? You just follow <laughs> it up. Um, and you, what you if do, I'd have missed. what you do good here is you just, you know, keep the ball low. McCandy tries to to block you, and you can see how happy you are there, celebrating. New position <laughs> centre forward, yeah. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need to work on my celebrations. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if that was included in the touch map, but we have a look at, at where you played tonight and the. Looking at God, you're everywhere. She's here, she's there, Leah Williamson. Um, what's, what's Jonas talked to you about then in, in where he wants you to play, what he wants to see from you? Yeah, he spoke to me a bit about pressing. Um, it's hard. When you're a defender, you're, you're used to being in the last line, so sometimes encouraging yourself to go front-footed and go higher is, is a little bit hard. Um, so he spoke to me about that, and then on the ball, just basically don't get in the way and um, <laughs> try and find pockets of space um, to, for me to advance a bit more. Hey, Leah, what a week for you. Again, congratulations on what you've achieved this week on and off the pitch. Well done on the result tonight, and thank you for staying out in the rain for us. Now, thank you. Anything for you lot. Uh, <laughs> right answer. Leah Williamson joining us live on Sky Sports. Now to embarrass her, that, that touch map is phenomenal. And, yeah, we rib her a bit about not mm. scoring goals, but what else she's doing for this team? Yeah, you know, when you transition from position to position, like she, she said, she prefers centre-half, and you get that routine. It's difficult to then go into the middle of the park because you see different pictures. Mm -hmm. But what Leah's got, she's got quality on the ball and she's always looking to break lines with her passes. And you saw that in the game tonight. And she's, she's very athletic. She can cover a lot of ground. She's fit. Um, and, yeah, she, uh, like you saw in the touch map, you know, she gives everything for this Arsenal side every time she plays. So revealing in that, actually, things are just clicking Mm. We we're asking why it's happening and, it's, and it does just take that time, the changes that they've made, the injuries, the illness that they've faced. Yeah, and uh, like Leah said, sometimes you don't know. Sometimes it's just through training and training and all of a sudden it happens. And, you know, it started with last week with the performance in the, the cup final was just magnificent, unbelievable, really. Um, and it's just continued, but 
maybe it is a case of getting used to not having a Viv Mead and Mar Beth mm. Mead and just trying a new formula and it takes time for that fluidity to come into it but they have and you know the momentum now is back in their favour with the teams that they have to play you know they're definitely back in the mix I was worried about them a couple of weeks ago I really was but that's the difference between mentality and that was a thing I was questioning a lot of the time show me mm. and I think they definitely have we'll talk more about Arsenal and hear from the other side of it in a bit but let's go back to the goals then the first from the penalty spot we're all saying eh, not sure about this one Kelly never a penalty for me um, there's very very limited contact on this one but I think Katie McKay plays it very smart she knows the contact at some point's coming in um, but it's very, very harsh, and I think Reading will feel hard done by. This is the best picture here. You know, there's a little tot touch there, but not enough for me to, to go down. But I think she's kind of bought this one. You know, she knows she's in and amongst it all. And the referee bought it for me, and that was the third minute. And, and I think the goalkeeper here should do better. She gets down to her left-hand side, gets a hand to the ball, but just not a strong enough wrist or, or palm just to parry it away. So, not sure about that first one. Second? Yeah, it was a goal. <laughs> um, I'm trying to remember it back in my head now but um, no this was really good build up play um, for Freedom Arnhem's goal nice little play I think they're really patient Kim Little popping up in that higher position now in the centre of midfield because she was able to get forward more they're patient Reading couldn't get anywhere near them just good build up lovely through ball there from Leo, from Volti sorry and then it's just a simple ball across from Ford and Marnham's not going to miss from there. But this is the fluidity I'm on about. Players mm. in positions on different lines, which is really, really good. And what I love about Marnham is darts in front of the defender and she's got an easy tap in. This is a, the vaulty pass, weight of pass, timing. And then Emma McCandy's wrong side to Ford's got the upper hand because if she touches it, she gets another penalty. And look, it's a lovely, simple pass across, but um, good team goal from Arsenal. Uh, if Emma McCandy did the right thing then she might want to look away at 3-0 on the own goal yeah unfortunate for her former Arsenal player it's not good to score an own goal against your own club but Reading uh, uh, give the ball away very cheaply here and you know Leah on the front foot takes the space brilliant and then just a little slip ball through and you know that's a difficult ball to contend with on a weaker foot you know she can't do much with that but Leah here does fantastic because she sees the space, she drives into it and it's just that little slip ball and you see McCandy there recovering but can't do enough. Right foot, you want to kind of swing your right foot away and up and out but just doesn't get the right contact on it. But, you know, if, if McCandy's not there, then Ford's there just to tap it in. So it's a well-worked third goal for Arsenal. I was like it so well, weren't they? Yeah, I was just enjoying Leah Williamson there driving with the ball. Mm. Obviously, we mentioned earlier the different positions. She's usually at centre-back and she can step out with the ball. But the power in which she just broke lines with dribbling and driving, it's another great option for Arsenal. All right, we've already seen Leah Williamson's goal. I know it's been a while since she last had one, but she did <laughs> score the fourth. Coming up next, we will hear from the Arsenal boss, Jonas Eidebert. If you're watching us on Sky Sports Showcase, you're about to leave. Join us on Premier League and on Football. What a week for Arsenal and Jonas Eidevel's team. Despite the weather, Conti Cup wins, midweek wins and three points tonight as they march towards that top three. And Jonas joins us live now. Jonas, thank you for coming on the show. Uh, we were just talking about the bad weather, but what a week to round off for you. Yes, uh, I'm, I'm especially tonight. I'm, I'm very happy with the performance here to, today. We saw that uh, right at the end in, in the huddle, the smiles, I think there's a bit of dancing in there. So what does this mean in the context of your season, this, this win today? I mean, it's just three points, but I, I like the way that we have been playing the, the whole week and how we have shown coming from that FA Cup game against Chelsea. And uh, I think we have improved, we have developed, and today was some of the best attacking football that I've seen us play. Is that, is that what changed it, that defeat to Chelsea, do you think? Uh, sometimes you can learn a lot from defeat. Uh, what I think changed it was what we did on the, pra on, on the training ground the whole week leading up to the Conte Cup final. And uh, the belief, the energy, the, the players, the coaches and everything we put together there, that's what changed it. But of course, I think maybe that game was the catal catalysator for it. Jonas, um, we talk about confidence and beating Chelsea as convincingly as you did in the Conti Cup final 3-1.
I saw a newfound confidence, especially the first 15 minutes on the front foot um, in this game tonight. Would you think, do you think that your team's more confidence coming off the back of that first trophy in four years? Yeah, I think that helps. Of, of course, it's, uh, it, it showed everyone and ourselves what we are capable of. And uh, of course, now when, when we know we're capable of it, why not try to repeat it and, and even try to go a little bit higher every time we play? Jonas, um, I know Stina Blaxinius wasn't available from the start tonight due to illness, but seven goals in the last 11 appearances for her has been magnificent. And what have you said to get the best out of her? Because again, has been similar to Kelly, there's been a big shift in your team, but also in her, in her confidence and hold up play. Yeah, so, so I think what, what we see with a striker like Stina is she, she usually scores the goals that you count she should score on, but it, it's more about getting her into the positions. Uh, so instead of focusing when she wasn't scoring goals on just like finishing, we have been focusing a lot on positioning. So she ends up uh, on the ball in the right moments and also that she can see that she can help the team uh, in a good way, not also outside the penalty area. And we did a, a run on Kim Little at the start of the show. Myself and Kelly are huge fans of her. She's played deeper, higher in the 10 position. She's your captain. Can you tell us a little bit more about her and why she's so vital to you, both on and off the pitch? Yeah, her versatility helps a lot. And like you're saying, we can... Sometimes when you play her as a six, uh, she but you feel like you're missing her in the final third. So mm -hmm. today when we were missing Stina as a nine, I wanted to have her as a 10 mm. so we could get use of her in the final third. And I thought that worked very well. Jonas, we often analyze managers, teams, talk about pressure and the like, but only you see what's going on in the dressing room. Illness again this week, you've had injuries, you've had lots thrown at you this season. How has that affected and yet probably galvanised the team? Where are you at? Uh, I'm, I'm at where, where I enjoy going to, to work every day and I think the group is feeling the, the same thing and we're just looking one game ahead. We, we know we have a, a tight squad uh, and sometimes that means that we have to be versatile with playing different positions and sometimes even different formations. But let's embrace that challenge and uh, let's try our best every game and I really feel that the players and the rest of the coaches they are behind that and that's a great feeling. Which means you can give me a yes or a no. Is the title still on? One game at a time and we <laughs> never give up. <laughs> Brilliant. Good Thank on. you, Jonas. Thank you for coming on. Cheers. Thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Was he ever going to say anything <laughs> else? A, a true politician's answer. Let's have a little look then at what they've got coming up because he says one game at a time. And look at the teams that are in there, Kelly, for your old side yeah, they've still got to play Manchester City Manchester United and Chelsea yeah and Tottenham that's always a North London derby that's always a tough game but yeah like you said City United and Chelsea so they're still very much in it but they are must win games for Arsenal and they're they're probably playing the best football um, so far this campaign the mm. confidence is there now uh, we talk about Beth and Viv all the time being out um, but I think they're a better footballing team now in terms of there's no real superstars like we was talking off air Kaz, but I just think you know they're, they're more fluid um, the cup final was really giving them a big lift a big boost the interchanging of positions playing with a smile on your face Kim Little's outstanding again Leah Williamson Volte in the middle just real calm composed performances today. I think the thing where you just spoke about there is squad being a little bit thin and, and maybe moving players around and he has got a fantastic squad, don't get me wrong, but it's that Champions League, North London Derby, Champions League, Manchester City, you know, that Champions League, how do teams, you know, going for the title or top three, how do they cope with those midweek games and such mm. big games as well? So that that will be the key week for them. They're nine days off now before that because they're not in the FA Cup anymore. You want to talk about Katie McKay, because right from that, that first half, you were saying she's been instrumental in, in getting this team to tick. Absolutely. She was everywhere today. And you just see from this clip here, as the ball's played into her, you're just going to highlight her there. You know, she's, she's normally on the left-hand side, further out. But she's just smart. She comes into this position here and she just points in this clip where she wants the ball. And this is the confidence and, and the... The, the little bit of arrogance that I like about Katie McCabe, that little flick there is just class and it sets Arsenal on the way. 
Marnham needs to hit the target there. But when Katie McCabe stays wide, you know, the ball cir circles out to the right, the ball comes out to the left. She's in acres of space. It's the quality on the whip on the ball, the pace of it. And it's just saying to the attacker, come and, come and just get something on me. But she has such quality delivery. And I really like this one. I'm just going to take it back a little bit here. You know, I'm, yes, it is about Katie McKay, but I also want to highlight the midfield as well. Kim Little, as Jonas said, they're playing a little bit higher. This isn't just a look ball from, from Lotta Ruben Moy. She's looking for Kim Little. And then I'm just going to pause it. As soon as Kim Little heads it back there, onto Volti. But that's your midfield three there. The diamond. Oh, it's not really. Uh, I want to delete that, make that better. I like the semicircle. Yeah, <laughs> me too, actually. Um, the, the triangle, rather, I even got a diamond, the triangle that you have, and that triangle rotates, and Kim and Leah in this sense at the top of it. But they work it, this is a proper footballing pattern of play. Work mm. it out then to Katie McCabe, who we're talking to, drives in, and the delivery could have got across the, the near post there, Marnham, but we know she's not a natural centre forward. But that was about Katie McCabe, that mm. last clip but I like the whole team fluidity from back to front and I'm seeing patterns of play and Arsenal like football really aren't like really dynamic we and together. Seen. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I'd seen that pattern of play or that style before. Uh, were they direct? Were they trying to play? I think they were a bit of both, but now I'm starting to see, I can see it a little bit more and the, the results are showing it as well. He's not going to say anything other than we're taking it game by game, but do you have more faith in this Arsenal side reaching that top three, challenging for the title than you did prior to that, that Conti Cup win? Absolutely. Um, I just think that has just given them a massive, massive boost of confidence. You know, when you feel like you can beat a Chelsea convincingly like they did, you know, they dominated the game for me. They were really up for it and, and had a real belief that they could do it on that day. And I think that then um, spirals into their performances between now and the end of the season. They need to keep that same pressure on, um, same application and just keep believing because <clears throat> they're certainly still within that title race it's not in their hands but they have the teams you know Chelsea Man United and City to play mm. to to potentially you know knock those off their perch I love the fact that I laid the excuses out in front of him and he wouldn't take them would he that and he's constantly said there's no excuses for where we want to be where we are and where we're going they are in their lowest position they've been since 2021 when it comes to the league as well do you change things into Bayern going forward? Do you bring Stina into that starting 11, Stina Black Stenius? Do you settle with this, this 11 oh, now? Ste Stina Black Stenius will come in. You know, she's got seven goals in the last however many appearances. She, she's she's the number nine in the team. And against Champions League football, it's very direct. Her runs in behind will get you a lot of success. Um, so I'd say that will be the change. But he can't make too many changes. He's got players out injured. And also, not everyone can play three games a week. Mm. We even saw that with Chelsea. If Manchester United were in the same position. They were doing the same. Man City. Squads are not... They're deep, but they're not that deep. So he will have to work with probably 12 or 13 that he's got. But Stina will come straight back in. If, if I was in his shoes. Speak for yourself. We could still do three in a week, couldn't we? <laughs> Maybe. Couldn't even do one. We will talk Kelly Chambers in a bit, but that race for the top four, another twist as Chelsea go top. What a goal from Sam Kerr. We'll talk about that too, coming up. In the race to stay away from the bottom of the league, Reading couldn't find a way through against Arsenal, going down 4-0. It's now 14 matches without beating the Gunners. Let's hear from boss Kelly Chambers, who spoke with Lindsay. Kelly, I think it was always going to be a mountain to climb here and you knew what your record was coming to face Arsenal, but the early penalty, I think that added to it even more, didn't it? No, it did. The early penalty, the, the, I think the hardest decision for me is not actually a penalty. We've watched it back already and, and the guys have watched it back up there. It's not a penalty, so it sets the wrong time for the game straight away. So, yeah, that's frustrating to concede that that early when it shouldn't have been a penalty. But I think we in the first half we gave Arsenal too much respect um, and we, we didn't defend aggressively like we like we normally do and I, I didn't think we caused them enough problems defensively to do that so um, but yeah look we knew it is going to be a tough game tonight and this I said to the girls at the end this can't define how our season is going forward now. I saw you having quite a long debrief with your captain Emma McCandy what was it you were talking about in that in that little huddle? Um, more obviously I thought her performance was great tonight I thought she did well in terms of sometimes even ex how exposed at times she was and I thought she played well so obviously that conversation but again the frustration for her in terms of like 
we're not we weren't aggressive enough defensively today we've shown over the last two weeks how organized we've been how good we've been in defensive transitions how aggressive we've been to get around players on the ball so we just didn't have that tonight and i think that's where some of maybe the senior players are a little bit frustrated because i think we could have come here and delivered better of ourselves I got the sense that you weren't expecting too much from this match, especially when you know that you've got some key ones coming in the next few games. But the 4-0 scoreline, is goal difference going to be something that you're going to be looking at? Um, not right now. I think score. I think goal difference for us, we're way, we're way above um, Leicester and Brighton in terms of um, goal difference. So for us right now, yeah, it's something that's in the back of our minds, but it's not something that we're, we're consciously thinking about. I think for us, it's just about getting points on the board. And look, we knew today was going to be a tough test and we knew that like, if we got something out of the game, great, but it was one of those that we needed to make sure and we came here and performed and, and gave a good count of ourselves. And I don't think we've done that today. And look, I said to the girls at the end, it's about, look, get rid of this game, forget it, because we, it's not somewhere where we thought we were going to get those points. But we've got big games coming up and this can't define us going forward. Do those ones define it just finally, the next ones? Um, yeah, they do. Like that, we're playing games in and around us, so they're they're going to be pressured games for both teams. So, yeah, I can see that they're the games where they're probably looking at us and vice versa. Going, is this somewhere where you can pick up points? So, yeah, obviously we've got FA Cup next week, so it's another toughie for us. But yeah, we just need to take each game as as it comes because if we start thinking too far ahead, we'll just lose track of where we are right now. Thank you very much. Cheers, Kelly. Thank you, Lindsay. Well, this might complicate things further then in, in losing track. This is the bottom four. What they've got coming up, Leicester Spurs is on Wednesday. Huge that. She mentioned the goal difference, minus 18 for Reading. Far better than Brighton and Leicester, minus 28 and minus 25. The worry, Karen, is that Leicester seem to have a bit of momentum. They've got a game in hand on them and three points. Is the buffer in the middle of those two teams going to be enough for Reading? Um, I think it's tough. I think it's the goals that I'm more worried about, you know, where, do, where the goals come against. And that's what I was trying to say in today's game. Could they have been a little bit more pragmatic? Then I could see evidence that I could see them scoring goals. But I think that's the element. I think all the team down there can defend when they need to, but it, the difference is going to be who's going to get those goals. And on tonight's evidence, I, I didn't see it enough from Reading. However, I believe in the manager. She's been there for, what, over 150 games for that team now, the, the, the non-affiliated Premier League team. So she's been fighting against it for a long time now. She knows how to do it. So I think that's why I'd be saying, yeah, I think she can do it. And even though Leicester got the result, I'm probably worried about them more so. And yet on Wednesday, you thought Brighton could be a bit sticky for them too. Out of the, I mean, obviously, there's only one of them going to go down, but, but who do you fear is dropping more at the moment? <sighs> Stuff one. Um... Yeah, Leicester, I think, have got it all to do. I think a lot of people, um, pundits, other teams have, have already written them off. So they've got certainly a point to prove to try and get off that bottom spot. Brighton, for me, concede far too many goals. Um, very shaky, very leaky at the back. So it, for me, it's between them two. And I just don't see Brighton scoring enough. I think Leicester have a little bit of momentum. They've got a point today. Um, they've scored eight fewer, though, Leicester than, than anyone else. Brighton were good today against City. Yeah. No, but I think the pitch was a bit of a factor, if I'm honest. Pitch not good enough. I think that didn't help with Manchester City and it helped Brighton also. But the last two games against, mm -hmm. they've had Ch uh, Chelsea, they did the uh, midweek game and um, City today. I thought they were all right. So um, I know, as we said, Leicester got a point today and a very good one. I still have enjoyed what the manager's done at Brighton and I, I feel quite confident in her ability to mm. get them out of that situation. Well, when we saw that she was last in charge, Amy Merrick, she did actually look like she could get more goals out of this team yeah. as well. Look, they've got attacking players, counter-attacking threats and they had two goals disallowed potentially. I, I needed to see them back again, but I saw enough today and I saw enough at the week on midweek as well to see some threats. Only but second half though. First half, Brighton, I thought, gave t too much respect to Chelsea and then second half they come out yeah, more they, on if, the front foot. But that's what that's what I wanted to see from all the teams at the mm. when you're playing Arsenal or Chelsea's, realistically, with those teams that have got that budget and that squad and that player, I don't expect them to, to get three points, but I expect to see something that I can go, I can see that when you play the teams mm. that you should be beating against. Mm. In the second half, you're right. That's the team that you should see for Brighton. Um, I didn't see Leicester's result uh, in performance today, so I don't know. I watched Brighton instead. Um, but they have got a positive result. But great for us. You know, it's tight at the top and the bottom, which I know it's the cliche thing for pundits and for fans at home, but that's what we want to see.
Say great. My mind is scrambled over goal difference, points, how many's left, who they're playing as well. Let's move away from the mess that is becoming the bottom yeah. of the table, as you say, great for a neutral, and look at something that's perfection. Sam Kerr's goal <laughs> for Chelsea against Manchester United. You know what? This is, I mean, this ball is unbelievable from Lauren James. It's not like a hoof forward. That is, she recognises that Sam Kerr's in between the two centre halves on the back shoulder. And then has the ability, look there, there's a run from Sam Kerr. Lauren's picked her out, curled it, bent it in between the two of them, chested it down, and then had the audacity to dink it over Mary Earps, who obviously picked up the best goalkeeper going, what, a week or so ago. So um, an unbelievable finish. But that, that one ball and that goal was the, the difference because without Erin Cuthbert, without Frank Kirby, without Penilla Harder, and haven't replaced G, mm. I think Chelsea are better when they play that type of football, don't have the possession and play counter-attacking football. Because Man United were, were very dominant more, today. a lot more possession And today, were though. very unlucky with two decisions, I have mm. to say, mm. for Manchester United. Funny you should say that, Karen <laughs> of the Carney. Uh, Stonewall <laughs> penalty, said Mark Skinner. Were yeah. they? Yeah, it was. Penalty. I think Buchanan, again, we saw it midweek. Should have been penalty. And today, no different. You know, Nikita Paris runs across. Cannon clips her leg and, and she goes over, you can see it from this angle and OK, if the referee can't see it, there's contact but on the key. I right think foot. the referee is in a really good position and she just misses it. But the, you know what, Cal? The, the, the lines person's that side. Here's the other Another one. Another one, blatant penalty for me. Battier wins the ball, Jess Carter, clumsy. You know, you can see it clearly in this shot here. Does not even oh. attempt to play the ball. She's playing the player. Um, you know, just doesn't time it right. And it's a, it's a blatant, blatant penalty. But that's on the floor. Mm. Mm. And I'd, I'd nick the ball and Kelly came through me. It's a foul. What's the difference? Feel free to demonstrate. No, I'm actually... Just, I'm, <laughs> she's tough. She's tough. I'm not. I'm Rich T. Um, but two... Mark Skinner should be fuming because that's two, two opportunities there that... When they dropped a second. Two penalty decisions that have, that have gone against them. And, OK, the referee might have missed it, but the lines person mm. five, six yards across shouldn't miss it. And that is a difference between title, Champions League spot and... I can understand why he's absolutely fuming because um, it should have been two penalties. And and you're right, it's those those fine margins. I mean, we don't know how Chelsea would have responded had they got those those two penalties as well. But it did just seem to to knock the stuffing out of them a bit. Watching that that game, did you ever feel outside of that that Manchester United were going to score? Well, they had a lot of possession. You know, I thought they were the better team, but I think Chelsea do, doing what Chelsea does best is they were very good off the ball, getting um, our numbers behind, just soaking up the pressure. And then, obviously, they've got players like James and Kerr that can hurt you with their uh, connecting pass that we just saw there. But I just felt like Manchester um, United were the better team, but just weren't clinical, and Chelsea were. Why Jonas Eidwell says taking it one game at a time, whilst they're all still looking at the title, it's because of these remaining fixtures for the top four. Again, they've all got to sort of play each other, and Arsenal could be a key with Manchester City, Manchester United and and Chelsea in that, that run too, Kelly. Oh, it's so exciting, isn't it? You just They're all going to play each other in the final part of the season. It's all potentially going to come down to the last game of the season, um, game of the season I think. Um, and it's just so close to call. Yes, Chelsea have pipped Man United to the spot right, top spot right now, but I can see Arsenal pipping, beating United, beating City. You know, any of these four teams can beat each other on any given day. And that's mm. what's so exciting about this league. Well done, fixture computer. <laughs> but they do have that game in, in hand. Look at Chelsea, or same uh, number of games as Arsenal. And both as well with the Champions League in there too, which, given all you've just said about the, the squads, Karen, could affect mm. things. Well, like I said for Arsenal, and Kelly mentioned it, the North and the Derby. Spurs, mm. massive game. Not only because of egos, because of two rivalries, Spurs are right in amongst it in the relegation battle now. You know, really struggling. Um, so for Arsenal, that's a massive game in between Bayern Munich and then the Champions League, as we said, um, and then Manchester City. So that is a mammoth four games for, for, for Arsenal. Um, but I still think City have got so much to say in this title. I think we... I don't think I've spoken enough about them, actually. I'm thinking I probably should have done because they're slowly creeping up. Well, not slowly. They've been winning games. And For the title? They, they, have to play the every, they have to play everybody else. They have a massive say in this title race if it's not for themselves but for somebody else, obviously. But, you know, that, that result again today, that's like champions as well, that winning mentality. Mm. I think there wasn't enough impartiality in my tone then. It sounded a bit surprised. But an 89th minute winner today again for Manchester City just turns things. Yeah, exactly. You know, they didn't want to 
pick up a point in that game. They were kept pushing right to the end. And Bunny Shaw, top goal scorer um, in the league, you know, she's delivering in big key moments when she gets those opportunities. And yeah, I'd agree with Kaz. You know, we haven't spoke about them a lot, but they've mm. been going under the radar quite quietly, have a big, strong team belief that, they're, that, that they can potentially win the league. <laughs> Outsiders, but yeah. don't fall over. Good, <laughs> isn't it? Uh, right, let's have a look at what's coming up then, shall we? Uh, plenty this week, Thursday, inside the WSL and the Championship Show too. That follows that at seven o'clock on Thursday. After a break for the FA Cup, we're back Friday, March the 24th. Everton, Liverpool, not a bad one that one. Spurs, Arsenal. We've already hyped that up. And then Manchester United against West Ham on Saturday, March the 25th for that one. One game at a time. How many times have we heard that tonight? You'll see them here on Sky Sports. Arsenal with those European adventures back up and running. And maybe, just maybe, that title as they reign against the Royals. Good night. Hotel.